Dr. Gopal Kakniji. Uh, he's a professor from Oklahoma University, America, USA. Uh, his, uh, so he will start, followed by the next speaker will be a very, very uh, uh, reputed gentleman, Sri Ambar Dubeji, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Civil Aviation. I was briefly able to connect with him last week. He was kind enough to attend and speak. So we will be having his uh, session and then we will, as, as the uh, session progresses, we'll then listen to the uh, other speakers for the day. Vote of thanks will be given by Dr. Uh, Chansekar Biradarji. Uh, if you have joined, uh, I will ask you when to give the vote of thanks. And then uh, this is how we, are, we have structured the program from a moderation perspective. Now I have uh, two, three minutes for my speech. So I will very quickly go through that. I know uh, people would be waiting to hear to the uh, main speaker, but uh, just a little bit of uh, context setting. Uh, so uh, please bear with me. It's a, a written speech so that I, I go very fast. Uh, so let me get started. So once again, uh, welcome. Um, the speech which I would be, or the, the uh, thing which I have is, Three, three part. One is building the context. Another is the little bit about the Indian agriculture, what's happening in the field of drone technology. And the third is what we can do as a GIST platform. And you heard about a little bit about that from uh, Yellowji, who is our uh, international convener. So Dr. V. Raghavan of Madras University, Dr. A. V. Krishnamurti from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and many other scholars have uh, given the opinion that the ancient Indian scriptures mention about the flying object from say 4,000 BC, some 6,000 years before. There was a gentleman, Mayasur, who wrote Viman Shastra. He mentioned some 16 kinds of metal or elements. And so far we have deciphered only three kinds of elements. And one of them resembles very near to the mercury uh, of today. World over, whether it's a Hakatha from Babylonia, Chinese general Hansen, Korean ruler as per the Linda Park's book, Kite Fighter, shows that the knowledge of the flying object has been uh, uh, very un uh, uh, uniform across the globe. Buddhist monks took it to the various parts of Asia. Kite was used as a signal to observe the enemies during the World War I and World War II. John Cater of New Zealand used this unmasked technology for the first time for, uh, for seeding his farms. So yeah, it, this was around 1970. But the father or the founder of the drone technology uh, uh, widely uh, acknowledged is Mr. Abraham Karim of Israel. I think he, in 17, uh, 1974, he gave that um, technology. Here in America, so as you all know, America was founded around 1700 uh, AD. There were four founding fathers. One of the founding fathers of America, Mr. Benjamin Franklin, who never became the president, uh, unlike other three, Mr. Benjamin Franklin lofted a kite to study electricity. There was another gentleman called Lawrence Hargrove in 1860. He designed a box kite, which gave inspiration to create power-driven aeroplanes. And in 1902, Wright brothers used this principle to make the first plane. So when we talk about the drone in Indian con uh, context, we should be also thinking about the application later on, like the, the way it will build the ecosystem leading to different kinds of other innovation. This is why I, I build that context that you know, don't see only from uh, India uh, drone into the Indian agriculture. Now, why drone technology? Food. Food will be the next big tool for setting the new geopolitics or the world order. Okay. Now, Indian agriculture. 16th November 2020. And I have, we have a government official here. He can validate it. A government of India granted ICRI SAT to use drones for agricultural activities. This was probably the first time. This uh, 26 January 2022, government of India policy on agri-drones was another set 
another step in that direction. Now, for many people, what's the advantage of drone? Why, what's the benefit? Why are we talking about this in the Indian context we, when we have such a small farm holdings? Well, the advantage of drones are multiple, like soil and feed analysis, crop monitoring, livestock management, plantation, crop spraying, check crop health, avoid use overuse of chemicals, right? Right now we are struggling with uh, Russia and Ukraine war and the supply of our fertilizer, chemical fertilizer have been affected. So uh, prepare for the weather glitches, monitor growth and geofencing. Some of the benefits of the drone would be security, high efficiency at, and water saving. Well, with all, all the good things, there are always a limitation. So the limitation on drone technology is weather dependency. It depends upon the weather, which we cannot uh, do much. And then lack of the knowledge and skill set in India. So the ecosystem, because we just got started. What should be the future focus? Future focus should be, there are many areas in, within drone technology which could be used. Future focus, one of the thing I think is marine droves because of the vast wetland, marine drones, I would say. And then connecting the drones to the Indian satellites we are, uh, so that the remote connectivity problem could be resolved. How those are things for the scientists to figure out. And lastly, how can just help? So one thing we can do here is there is a program in America, uh, American University. It's called Unmanned Technology Aerial System Certification Program. This is a 16 weeks uh, credit, uh, 16 semester, 16 week semester, uh, which has 16 credits. Uh, they have very deep uh, drone curriculum uh, defined, right, uh, from engineering and all. So this could definitely help in uh, getting our uh, right authorities or institution uh, connect to those institutions and, and form a curriculum which is more relevant and more uh, uh, latest as per the technology is concerned. Uh, largely, India is a, a very young nation with a lot of youth, with a lot of aspirational youth, huge population to feed, right, uh, and shrinking farmland. Now, there, there is going to be a lot of thing to be done in this drone technology, like the reform, uh, the right reform, which could help, right? There is a discussion uh, between so many natural farming, organic farming, this or that, how all these things could be taken into consideration so that we do not impose just drone because somebody in West uses it. It has to be from the Indian context. So with that, I would uh, invite my next speaker, Dr. Uh, Mr. Arun Pandeji, to give more context. And then from Arun Pandeji, the next speaker will be uh, Mr. Dr. Gopal Kakniji. So Arun Pandeji, welcome. Namaskar. Sabu ko jist forum ki or se. Namaskar. Ati hasi trishti se jab hum bharat mein dekhte hai, to kisi bhi takniq ka kafi virodh hota hai. Jaisi computer aya. Kabhi ek samay tha tractor jab bharat mein aya, तो इसका भी काफी विरोध हुआ हमें याद आता है हम लोग की उम्र में एक मूवी नया दौर आई थी जो फार्म मैकेनाइजेशन के विरोध में ही वो मूवी बनी थी तो किसी भी तकनीक का हम लोग सरलता से उसको एक्सेप्ट नहीं करते वही स्थिति ड्रोन के साथ भारत में आज दृष्टिकोण दृष्टिगोचर होता है बहुत सारे लोग कृषि क्षेत्र में विशेषकर ड्रोन को समझते हैं जिससे कि इससे हमारी एम्प्लॉयमेंट खत्म हो जाएगी हमारी जो ट्रेडिशनल बहुत सारे कार्य थे वो समाप्त हो जाएंगे परंतु ये सत्य नहीं है सत्य यह है कि ड्रोन से बहुत सारे फायदे हैं और ड्रोन भारत में कृषि को बिल्कुल रिवॉल्यूशनाइज करने जा रहा है जैसे अभी शरद जी ने ही बताया कि जो सर्वे है पेस्टिसाइड स्प्रे है पेस्टिसाइड स्प्रे में क्या है ट्रेडिशनली जब हम एक मैन एक व्यक्ति जाता है वो जेट सिस्टम से या ट्रैक्टर से करता है तो उसको बहुत इनहेल करता है और ज्यादा से ज्यादा उसमें पेस्टिसाइड डाल पाता है किंतु यदि हम ड्रोन का उपयोग करेंगे तो मिनिमम ड्रिफ्ट और मैक्सिमम पेनिट्रेशन के साथ जो ऑप्टिमम जो क्वांटिटी जानी चाहिए वो जा सकती है ये जा सक ऐसा हो सकता है उसी तरह से जो जीवात ये लोकस्ट अभी पिछले साल भी भारत में आया था लोकस्ट के आने के कारण बहुत सारी जो प्रॉब्लम्स हुई थी वो ड्रोन के सिवा किसी भी चीज से ठीक नहीं हो उसको काउंटर नहीं किया जा सकता भारत में जो सबसे बड़ी समस्या आज है युवा वर्ग के ये 
बेरोजगारी का या रोजगार का और पर्टिकुलरली रूरल सेक्टर में जो रोजगार है एम्प्लॉयमेंट है दैट इज वेरी मच वेरी मच एट इन प्रॉब्लम ये ड्रोन एक ऐसा माध्यम है जो कि रूरल इंटरप्रेनरशिप को भी डेवलप करेगा और रूरल एरियाज में ड्रोन के चलाने वाले मतलब जो उनके पायलट्स होंगे ड्रोन के को मैन्युफैक्चर करने वाले या ड्रोन को वहां पे छोटा मोटा रेक्टिफाई करने वाले ये बहुत मास एम्प्लॉयमेंट देने वाला एक वस्तु एक टेक्नोलॉजी अपने सामने आई है और हमें हम सबको ड्रोन पर्टिकुलरली एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में इसका स्वागत करना चाहिए आज प्रधानमंत्री जी ने पिछले वर्ष हमें पता है 25 अगस्त को ड्रोन जो ड्रोन की जो पॉलिसीज थी वो काफी डोलरम में थी कई वर्षों से चार पांच वर्षों से उसमें कोई अस्पष्टता नहीं थी तो उसको स्पष्ट करते हुए 25 अगस्त को उन्होंने नए ड्रोन रूल्स दिए जो कि भारत में ड्रोन इंडस्ट्री के लिए एक क्रांतिकारी कदम सिद्ध हुआ और ड्रोन इंडस्ट्री को बहुत सरल बना दिया गया इसलिए अब जो है ड्रोन हमारे लिए कोई समस्या नहीं है कोई भी आदमी ओन कर सकता है कार की तरह उसको ओन करके हम चला सकते हैं आज के कार्यक्रम में हम लोग जो गवर्नमेंट के इनिशिएटिव्स हैं जैसे एस एम ए एम है सबमिशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चरल मैकेनिज्म इस पे चर्चा करना चाहेंगे विद्वान काफी विद्वान लोग हैं सरकार के भी अधिकारी हैं और इससे कृषि से जुड़े हुए विद्वान लोग हैं CHC कस्टम हायरिंग सेंटर में जैसे ट्रैक्टर होता है थ्रेशर होता है इस तरह की चीजें होती है उसमें कैसे ड्रोन को लाया जाए इस पर भी हम लोग आज चर्चा करना चाहेंगे एसओपी फॉर ड्रोन एप्लीकेशन विथ पेस्टिसाइड फॉर क्रॉप प्रोटेक्शन स्प्रेइंग सॉयल एंड क्रॉप न्यूट्रिय इन एग्रीकल्चर फॉरेस्ट्री एंड नॉन क्रॉप एरिया ये जो सरकार ने इसके एसओपी बनाए हैं इस पे भी आज हम लोग चर्चा करेंगे श्रीमान अंबर जी हैं जो भारत सरकार को और उसको रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं तो उन वो है अपने इंद्रमणि मिश्रा जी हैं जो कि एग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्ट्री से ये लोग इन लोगों से निवेदन है कि ये इस पर अपना प्रकाश डालेंगे सबसे महत्वपूर्ण आज जो चर्चा का विषय रहेगा एग्रीकल्चर ड्रो एग्रीकल्चर ड्रोन के लिए भारत सरकार ने प्रोडक्टिविटी लिंक इंसेंटिव दिया है प्रारंभ किया है लगभग एक करोड़ का वो प्रारंभ हुआ है तो उसके बारे में भी बहुत सारी क्वेश्चन है बहुत सारी क्लैरिटी नहीं है तो आज जो हमारे एक्सपर्ट्स है उनसे निवेदन है कि इन प्रोडक्टिविटी लिंक इंसेंटिव जो एग्रीकल्चर ड्रोन्स के लिए रहेगा इस पे भी आप प्रकाश डालें तो इन सारे विषयों पर आज चर्चा करते हुए आज का कार्यक्रम को सार्थक बनाएं इसलिए इस निवेदन के साथ मैं अपनी वाणी को पूरा विश्राम पूर्ण करता हूं थैंक यू अरुण जी आवर स्पीकर फर्स्ट स्पीकर विल बी डॉक्टर गोपाल कंकनी जी ही इज अ प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम ओक्लोहमा यूनिवर्सिटी यूएसए गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन नमस्कार टू एवरीवन इन भारत होप यू आर हैविंग अ गुड इवनिंग टुडे सो आई एम गोपाल कखानी आई वर्क एज अ प्रोफेसर एंड करेंटली एन इंटरम डिपार्टमेंट है डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्लांट एंड सॉइल साइंसेस एट ओक्लोमा स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी दिस इज इन स्टिल वाटर ओक्लोमा सो टुडे टॉपिक सो ड्रोन एप्लीकेशन इन इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर so i thought i'll focus on how we can use these drones both in research and production settings i think it's very important for indian agriculture just a brief overview what we do here at osu we have an unmanned systems research institute so it's internationally renowned with state of the art facilities and equipment so we train postdocs faculty students visiting scientists and uh, we also have access to design manufacturing and flight testing and we have over 20 million dollars in federal support for unmanned aircraft research so we have this institute called as excelsior and it has received funding from national science foundation uh, national center for avionics research uh, from nasa and several other agencies so it's a partner partnership between different agencies and some of the unique assets we have as i mentioned we have the collaborative design space we have the unmanned aircraft flight station where we can test different types of unmanned systems and we also have a training center at fort sill one of the air force bases here in oklahoma and also we have testing facilities for radio frequency so these can all be made available to collaborators 
And there is active research in terms of drone applications. So you might have seen all these reports, agricultural drone applications by UN, by several different agencies around the world, including the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine. And the drone market environment is growing pretty rapidly. Okay, so you have the hardware, you have the software piece, and then you have the service sector. So where there's a lot of opportunity for researchers and the new generation of scientists that are coming forward. And coming to smart research where we can use these drones, say for example, we can use them to classify crop type of our variety, detect environmental stresses like nutrient stress, water stress, insect damage, pest or weed problems. And we can also monitor crop growth and physiology, uh, say biomass production, canopy coverage, say plant nutrient status. And finally, we can also predict the yield. For example, here, uh, we use these drones heavily on our wheat breeding trials. Say for example, if you have about say in this particular yellow box here, you have a total of 2,145 plots. So how many people, how many days, and in terms of data analytics and data decision, it takes a significant amount of time to process the data from these 2,145 plots. So, but with the 30 minutes preparation uh, with only two persons and a 15 minute flight time. So you can collect the data from these uh, 2,145 plots within 15 minutes. So if you talk to any breeder, they'll say they need to walk at least or spend three to four hours in the field to collect data, visual data from these 2000 plots. But within 15 minute flight time and with two persons, you can do this entire operation. And the challenge there is it really are, it produces about 40 gigabytes of data. So the questions of big data, AI tools and post processing, how you process this data is again a challenge. So we can use these drones, say once you use the drone, you have this beautiful imagery that's being generated by the drones within that 15 minute time frame, And then you get this uh, huge set of data. Once you have developed the algorithms uh, for each of these uh, plant traits that the breeder or the agronomist or the physiologist is interested in, you can push this data out for quick decisions rather than waiting days and days. And also the advantage is your drone sensors provide information that a visual eye cannot detect. So that's the advantage of involving these drones in research. And coming to smart production, uh, I would like to bring this uh, analogy here. Uh, say for example, in the US, uh, the tra tractors are favored because the number of farms in the United States is about uh, uh, say about 2 million farms in 2019 with about 363 million hectares of farmland. So the average farm size for 2019 is about 180 hectares, okay? So that's an advantage because we can use these huge tractors on these huge farms. But whereas if we come to India, the number of farms in India is about 146 million farms compared to the 2 million in US. And the total farm acres is almost similar, or uh, almost half the size of what you see in US. It's about 157 million hectares. So the average farm size is only one hectare. So how do you fit this huge tractor on this small one hectare piece of land to make any management decision? So that's where I think the drones would come handy in terms of making the farm operations more mechanized as labor shortages we are experiencing in India. So for this, I think most of you have heard of the Swiss, Swiss knife. So the tractor has been the Swiss, Swiss knife for the US agriculture. So I think the drones can be the Swiss knife for the Indian agriculture. So what can you do with these drones in your production practices? You can do the soil and field analysis. You can create 3D soil profiles. You can measure soil water nutrient status. You can use drones even to provide nutrients and also spray for enhanced water use efficiency because your field sizes are pretty small. And you can make decisions on planting, probably just in time delivery of planting supplies, say from the, uh, wherever you have them stored, they can be brought to the field, or you can shoot seed pots into prepared soil. So this is something I think the 
Indian community can work on in, the, in terms of developing more precise planting techniques using drones. So this can minimize costly and heavy equipment like tractors. So it can avoid compaction and things like that. And it will also reduce the time and cost in say planting because you ha have small areas, small operations, just one person sort of operations and everything can be automated. So the only thing the engineers and agriculturalists in India need to figure out is how to develop these uh, seed planting with drones on small acres. And you can do in-season management, say irrigation management, identify spots where you're short on water, reduce cost of applying chemicals. So you can use for fertilizer, herbicide and pesticide applications. So identify, diagnose, and then at the same time treat uh, any pest or disease the same day or within the same hour. So you can send one drone to identify the incidence of a disease or pest and the second drone can follow uh, to apply the chemical. So, and you can also spot treat. So variable rate applications or spot treatment to reduce the cost is possible. And on the, finally, you can reduce the environmental cost because we are not putting that much of chemical or fertilizer into the environment. The third aspect of the production is harvest. So do you think uh, we can apply drones in harvest? But I think uh, identifying the maturity, the right stage to harvest is very important. So to derive the quality uh, when we are working with lots of these uh, high value crops, you can also estimate the yield and the quality at the same time, and also the nutritional quality of the produce. So this makes it very feasible. And you can also use them to say, for example, overcome certain issues like uh, say, whenever you have a flood at the time of harvest, uh, you might have germinating rice panicles. Probably you can spray the brine solution using drones to prevent the germination of the rice seeds. So those are some of the applications where uh, we can use drones as part of the smart production practices. So that's, that's in brief what I wanted to visit with you all today and thanks for the opportunity. So thanks, uh, Dr. Gopal. Our next speaker will be Ambar Dubeji. Uh, he's from uh, the Ministry uh, of Civil Aviation, uh, which is a very important part from the drone perspective. Uh, Ambar Ji, time is very much. Talk to me. You can also mix in Hindi English. Uh, that's totally fine because a lot of people would also like to listen to you in Hindi. So you can talk to each other. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Sharadji, and uh, very good morning to all our friends in the U.S. and good evening here uh, to our people here. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Just for making uh, this happen. It's been a few days since we had a talk with Sharadji. It was good to see uh, so many people joining together on this very, very noble uh, uh, act. Uh, because yeah, uh, basically it fits into our Prime Minister's uh, slogan of Jai. Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, and Jai Vigyan. Because they say Kisan is the one who puts the food on our table, which we'll have as a lunch or a dinner now. And the Jawan actually keeps us uh, uh, safe and alive so that we can have these nice conferences and talk to each other across, uh, across the planet. And uh, if the uh, science, the Vigyan, uh, if it doesn't work towards these two basic stakeholders, one who puts the food on our table and one who keeps us alive and safe, and you're seeing what uh, is happening in Ukraine and before that, some other uh, hotspots. Uh, it, that uh, science is then of no use. It is just theory. Okay, so I'll not uh, spend too much time about uh, uh, the drone part. I think many people are anyway uh, very knowledgeable about what's happening in the drone uh, uh, space in India, also on the policy side. A lot of things have happened in the last six months. Uh, what has happened in the last six months is actually uh, uh, I mean, a natural outflow of what happened over the last two years. So a lot of churning was happening behind the scenes. And then finally, with the Prime Minister's guidance, vision and intervention, we have managed to bring in uh, some uh, uh, large radical changes. I'll just quickly run through them. Uh, and then I would rather uh, take questions because so when Babu to Prasa, Saval Puche, TK, or Shamta hai, Vyang or criticism Leneka and if so, there are some good suggestions, we'll be very happy uh, to take that and address that within the short time that we have. 
एंड ऑल्सो इसके बाद भी ये देखिए एक बार जुड़ गए तो अब हमेशा के लिए जुड़े जुड़े रहेंगे तो अगर आगे भी कोई कंस्ट्रक्टिव क्रिटिसिज्म वेरी हैप्पी टेक दैट ओके सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ ड्रोन पॉलिसी पॉलिसीज आर मेड इन अ कॉन्टेक्स सो आज से दो साल तीन साल पहले जो रूल्स थे they were in the context of oh, jo saudi aramco mein hua strike iran mein the afghanistan lots of these uh, uh, nice places where lots of uh, uh, bad things were happening and based on that you know the, when we came up with the first uh, set of uh, regulations they were heavily weighed in a uh, balance in in uh, i mean they had a little disbalance uh, on the side of uh, safety and security safety of course is very important even today both these aspects are very important it's just a matter of to what degree do we use these points So, और सिक्योरिटी के भी बारे में कुछ हमारी एजेंसी का जो फीडबैक था उसके बेसिस पर हमने इतने रिस्ट्रिक्शंस डाल दिए कि वो एक तरह से नॉन स्टार्टर ही हो गया और फिर पिछले साल मार्च में वी केम अप विद न्यू रूल्स अगेन दोज रूल्स वर लिटल आई मीन वेट अ लिटल मोर हेवी ऑन दी सिक्योरिटी साइड एंड अगेन वी गॉट अ बैकलैश फ्रॉम आर अकेडमिशियंस एंड फ्रॉम आर यंग स्टार्टअप एंड ऑन पेपे नॉज एंड this time uh, i think the pm also took, took note of it and he was a little upset and then we also got a little banging uh, uh, for uh, coming up uh, with these rules and then uh, we got uh, within two months we were told that we have to completely abolish this we have to completely wipe it away and this government is not famous for changing rules once they come up with they come up with lots of path breaking radical earth shattering kind of uh, uh, rule changes but uh, they're not uh, famous for changing it in fact drone rules and the farm laws these are the only two rules which have actually been uh, repealed and in fact farm rules have only been uh, kept in abeyance not uh, actually abolished but uh, drone rules we were told to just abolish it start again with a clean sheet of paper talk 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 and basically listen 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 to the industry the startups the private venture i mean the venture capitalists and the academicians i mean there were some some 16 professors from different iits who wrote a very scathing letter सही कि सर आप इतनी सारे रिस्ट्रिक्शंस इतने सारे परमिशंस एंड अप्रूवल्स अगर करेंगे तो आई मीन हाउ द हेल आवी डोंट नो इनोवे और फिर वही होगा जैसा हमेशा होता है कि ऑल आर स्मार्ट पीपल विल एक्चुअली एंड अप इन यूरोप एंड यूएस एंड ऑल द नाइस प्लेसेस ऑन प्लैनेट अर्थ और फिर वो जिस्ट के माध्यम से आप उनसे एडवांटेज ले सकते हैं बट ना दी दी बल्क ऑफ दी बेनिफिट्स वुड ऑल बी गॉन सो एंड ऑल द पिचाइज एंड द नडेलास वी वुड हैव लॉस्ट so uh, again jumping several steps so finally in august we uh, so over the next two three months we had to really work hard uh, late nights weekends birthdays anniversaries had to be sacrificed and uh, in august we came up with the new uh, drone rules here in uh, it was brought down some 40 plus pages to just about 11 pages operational part is only four five pages because the rest is all uh, definitions and statutory clauses and all that the real meat of the policy about certification about registration about operations about some of the restrictions that's only in in four or five pages so this came in august end isme hum ek kuch 25 tarah ke form hua karte the pehle for operating drones wo 25 usko cut pit ke 20 usme se hata diye sirf panch basic forms hai kuch 72 type ki fees hoti thi but jitne form hoge utni fees hogi and based on the size of the drones usme wo 250 gram ka bhi drone matlab ek pao ka bhi drone hai aur 300 kilo ke bhi drone the so based on the categories and the size of the company and the number of drones etc etc we had created lots of complications and categories within categories and to agar aap fees dene jayenge to bharat kosh pe aapko 72 type ki fees hua 72 types of fees uh, categories hote hain to wo uh, uh, danda maar ke uh, usko abhi 72 se sirf char kar di so there are only four categories and wo four may be most of the things have been brought down to almost like uh, 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 about a dollar so it's just 100 rupees hai for 10 10 years you have to just pay 100 rupees which is just about 1.2 dollars so effectively made free uh, because the whole purpose is to bring in more and more people and more and more innovation and make it simpler and easier so that our scientists uh, young scientists and engineers and designers and software uh, code writers they focus only on what they are good at which is in the labs on their computers to focus more on value addition rather than uh, uh, wasting time uh, visiting government offices and filling up forms okay so वो हुआ फिर उसके बाद एक हमारा विद इन थर्टी डेज वी बर टोल्ड टू कम विद एयर स्पेस मैप बिकॉज इससे पहले पीपल डिंट इवन नो वे टू फ्लाई एंड द ग्रीन जोन वर ओनली अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड दैट टू वॉज नॉट शोन वी वर नॉट अलाउड टू शो द रेड जोन बिकॉज वी वर टोल्ड बिकॉज ऑफ सिक्योरिटी रीजन यू कॉन्ट शो द रेड जोन सो आफ्टर लॉट ऑफ चर्निंग एंड अगेन आई एम जम्पिंग सेवरल स्टेप्स एंड लॉट ऑफ हीटेड डिबेट्स एंड ऑल दैट and it's nothing i mean i'm not trying to uh, bring down our, our brothers and sisters who work in the security side because it's those people who keep they are the, also the jawans or the, the the soldiers without uniform the intelligence agencies and all that who keep us so safe okay 
so uh, but having said so uh, uh, we then decided in that balance between growth and safety and security we'll weigh a little more on the growth and innovation side so uh, then on uh, within a month on 24th of september we also released india's airspace map and uh, all the red zones were shown and uh, of course low 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 resolution so actually it doesn't really tell much but uh, it was a big uh, mindset change and uh, surprise surprise 90% of india had been opened up 90% of india was green only few areas were red which is basically the airport uh, core area of the airports and the uh, cantonments or uh, some of the naval bases or air force stations uh, drdo labs or something and uh, the yellow zones were the uh, surrounding areas around an airport where uh, uh, there is in the approach path of the aircraft and the rest 90% which was earlier 20 25% was made 90% was made green because series of even uh, meetings uh, which are chaired by the honorable prime minister himself along with some very very senior leaders and ministers uh, across uh, across the government so that airspace map came in uh, september and then in october we came up with the uh, utm policy uh, how how will these uh, uh, the two types of birds engage the large airplanes uh, with the air traffic control and the the smaller drones which will be in what we call the very low uh, level air very low level airspace so uh, it, it laid the framework uh, there then on 26th of january which is our republic day uh, we uh, made all the five forms because as i said 25 forms became five forms so we made those five forms online wo pancho form ko online kar diya gaya to ab you can easily access and pay money on bharat kosh and uh, get your registrations and other things done and uh, 25 ko hi humne fir a drone certification scheme because under the new rules liberalized rules uh, the drone certification earlier was very tough lots of tests and lots of checks and lots of approvals and licenses were required all that was abolished so on 26th of jan we also uh, released our uh, uh, drone certification scheme and uh, i believe in uh, uh, as early as april end or maybe in may mid may we'll have a first type certificate which is issued out and then after that there'll be series or every month we'll have a two five or 10 type certificates given out for drones now the benefit of a type certificate is that once you have a type certificate like it's like a mercedes uh, say uh, mercedes uh, uh, c series or uh, whatever s series and once you get uh, the type certificate for a particular uh, mercedes or a bmw 5 uh, series or 7 series then you can keep on manufacturing dozens and dozens or hundreds or thousands of such bmw 7 series uh, without going back to the government and you can self certify it and you you can also in our case generate the registration number also online so everything is now moved to the digital type platform which is our uh, one stop shop single window online system where all approvals permissions etc they happen other than of course the yellow and red zone because that's a little sensitive so that for that you have to write to us and we will work with you offline but that also uh, over the next 6 uh, months or one year will be moved on uh, to the the system so that uh, you don't need to uh, even see it will be a nameless faceless kind of an interaction even for sensitive yellow zones and uh, red zones so this happened in uh, january another very interesting thing happened on 29 january which is 3 days later which is when we have the uh, the meeting retreat uh, as the end of the republic day celebration and there for the first time you would have seen uh, that at rashtrapati bhavan we had a thousand drone uh, drone show of a swarm drone of thousand drones now just 6 months back uh, you can't imagine even flying a drone in delhi and here in the reddest of the red zones which is at rashtrapati bhavan which also has the prime minister's office right next door in the north block and the south block we had thousand drones flying there with all the jammers shut down and all that and the bigger surprise was that for 11 minutes of the drone show the prime minister and the president but actually in pitch darkness and this too was a big radical jump because normally uh, the plan was that uh, first the president prime minister would leave the vips will leave and once uh, the honorable president reaches the rashtrapati bhavan then the the lights will be dimmed and uh, you'll have the drone show but some some very senior authorities intervene and they said there is no point in having a drone show after the event so we're going to have during the event now you can imagine what the prime minister security would have what kind of nightmares or uh, headaches they would have had to see the ultra vvips and even the snipers can't even see uh, uh, where those people are and in pitch darkness they saw the drone show so that was a historic event uh, uh, this happened in uh, february uh, and i'll jump uh, several steps now so in, in february uh, we also came up with the new import policy now a lot of debate had been happening over the last 6 7 months and uh, uh, all over the world uh, imported drones is generally controlled by way of non tariff barriers nobody says he will uh, so it's like indian drones cannot sell in in china despite all the nice things that our northern our friendly northern neighbor would say but we can't sell our drones there because they'll put in lots of non tariff barriers so there was a lot of pressure to actually for us also to ban because right now 
over the last uh, 10 or 15 years, a lot of Chinese drones had come in and uh, these comprise almost 90-95% of the drones that we had. And because of that, our domestic sector was suffering and uh, I mean, uh, and those drones, because they're worldwide, globally also, they have a 60-70% market share. And uh, there are allegations that uh, the Chinese government and the army has put in lots of, uh, a lot of money into uh, this company. So it's very difficult to compete with them on a quality and a price basis to, uh, given our state today. But so that kind of support had to be given. And then finally, the government took a bold step and we have actually come up with an import policy in which we have banned. We've used the, uh, the word prohibited, uh, uh, which is normally not done. So we have prohibited import of completely built drones and CKD and SKD kits. And at the same time, components have been completely freed up. Of course, there are exemptions that for R&D purpose, so uh, a manufacturer or a research institute can always import drones. Okay, and that, there's a limit and there's a paperwork involved and for defense. So for these two R&D uh, and for defense, uh, you can import uh, completely built drones or even SKD, CKD kits. But uh, for others, it's completely banned and there's a, there's a uh, process for, by which you'll uh, have to take it. Then uh, two days later, on 11th of February, we also simplified the uh, we also simplified the uh, the licensing for the drone operators, and we said uh, we are abolishing the drone pilot license. If you just take a drone pilot certificate uh, from any DGCA certified drone school, that is good enough, and we uh, we abolished the the license also. So uh, just to uh, uh, okay, I also forgot to mention about the PLI scheme. So uh, when August we had come up with the uh, drone rules. Uh, surprise, surprise, within three weeks, the government of India also approved the PLI scheme. The PLI scheme basically uh, is the production linked incentive wherein uh, we actually put money in the hands of the entrepreneurs who actually produce drones. So there's a particular formula and it's a very liberal scheme. And there are some, I think, 15 or 16 odd uh, uh, PLI schemes and auto, electric vehicles and batteries and stuff, high end stuff. And they have taken eight months, nine months, 10 months to get approved because there are lots of checks and balances and lots of debates which happen before a PLI scheme uh, is done. And uh, uh, very happy to, uh, to, uh, to, to share with you that our drone scheme happened within three weeks. Uh, the cabinet approved it and uh, thereafter within two weeks, we notified the scheme. And in March uh, uh, last month, we uh, also put out the application form for PLI schemes. And you'll, uh, again, I'm very happy to report that uh, most of the companies... Uh, uh, of course, the, there's, a, there's a scrutiny going on. We are scrutinizing some of the, the inputs and the numbers and the auditor certificates that they've, uh, they've uh, supplied. Uh, but uh, uh, what we're seeing is uh, most players who are qualified have grown 2x, 3x, 4x, and one company's even grown 5x in just one year, five times uh, in just one year after liberal within, uh, I mean, we, have, we liberalized us six months back. So, uh, so I'll stop here on the, the policy front. So, uh, uh, in, just to summarize, in the last six months, we've simplified it. We come up with the, uh, the we released the airspace map. Made ninety percent of India as a green zone. We're up to four hundred feet. You don't need any permission, no intimation, no police thana, no DMSP. Nobody has to be uh, uh, to be uh, checked with. Uh, earlier, uh, for operating a drone, you needed uh, MHA clearance. That clearance has been uh, now removed. Uh, then we came up with a PLI scheme. Uh, then we uh, made all the forms online. And then we remove the, uh, we put an import ban, and then finally we uh, uh, also remove the uh, remote pilot license. So this, uh, in a nutshell, has given a lot of uh, freedom and space to our uh, young entrepreneurs and uh, engineers and scientists and academicians that they can now just focus on innovation, innovation, and innovation. Now the harsh fact is that uh, the Western world, say U.S., uh, Israel, Europe, many of those are almost 40, 45 years maybe ahead of India today. Uh, and our uh, friendly neighbor up north, uh, uh, Mr. China, they're also at least, uh, I would say, 15 to 20 years ahead. But as we've seen in uh, field after field, uh, especially in high tech, whether space or nuclear or uh, auto or, uh, or internet or mobile, uh, we Indians are almost like the proverbial elephant as against the dragon uh, up north. And uh, we, we, we are very lazy at times, we are slow to move, but once we move, the entire uh, earth shakes. And we expect the same thing to happen in the case of drones. We were a little late to the party uh, because of whatever our, our mindset, our thinking, our ideologies, maybe we were too worried more on the safety and security side. But now they've woken up, uh, this elephant has woken up and we are seeing uh, that uh, just like we've done it in the case of internet or mobile telephony, we'll shock both the, the pessimists and the optimists. Uh, India has its own funny way of uh, shocking both, both extremes. So we are always somewhere in between. 
and i'm very sure that uh, over the next uh, one two or three years we'll see an absolute explosion uh, in the number of uh, startups uh, the new technology which will come up all the various uh, use cases in sector of the sector and many of those were uh, mentioned by my previous speakers pandey ji spoke about it charat ji and uh, uh, professor takani sir so uh, uh, i mean it's uh, there are some 16 or 17 ministries with whom we are in direct touch i also uh, so on the demand side yeah so as they say uh, to to uh, to make any sector uh, grow uh, they basically uh, after all the uh, harvard stanford uh, business school and all that it just comes down to three basic things pds as we call it uh, p for policy d for demand and s for supply so on the policy side i've already narrated uh, some of the things we have tried to do uh, uh, with push from and the vision of the prime minister himself on the demand side as i said some 16 17 ministries we are working with whether it's oil mining agriculture swamitva there's so many scheme land records uh, uh, military of course uh, they are pumping in a lot of money into our youngsters so uh, on the demand side we try to do that on the supply side as i mentioned lots of simplification of uh, rules processes has been done so the youngsters uh, uh, don't uh, 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 waste time uh, on the import side as i said import is banned the other supply side initiative is the co production linked incentive where you're saying you produce more and we have a a checkbook uh, in our hands and we got to put money back in your hands the more in fact again you will be surprised that uh, the amount of pli the production linked incentive which has been allowed by the government is the uh, 120 crores which is double uh, the entire manufacturing base of course that base is very small we have started very small but in terms of numbers it's 200% what we are going to put back is what two twice of what the entire manufacturing base was there in uh, uh, 2021 so this baby are i'll stop here and i'll just uh, maybe 10 seconds on on the agri front uh, so as uh, my previous speakers also mentioned in uh, during the locust attack uh, the and that's when uh, so locust actually came in as a surprise and a pleasant surprise and it actually helped us uh, bring drones into the forefront of these youngsters who in the midst of covid it was a double uh, i mean a double attack is like gohri mar jis hum bolte hain ki matlab ek taraf ko covid hai ki wo rajasthan ke wo kisanon ke bacche bangalore se mumbai se pune se lot aaye ghar कि भाई नौकरी चली गई बच्चे बीवी बच्चों के साथ वापस आ गए और ऊपर से पड़ी है लोकस वो बलूचिस्तान साइड से तो मेगा स्वाम नॉर्मली स्वाम लोकस तो हर साल आते हैं दिस ईयर वाज अ मेगा स्वाम ऑन एवरी 20 25 इयर्स दिस अ मेगा स्वाम तो लास्ट वन वाज 93 ऑलमोस्ट 27 इयर्स बैक तो ये मेगा स्वाम वो इथियोपिया इधर उधर से होते हुए पाकिस्तान बलूचिस्तान साइड से इटके एंड इट वेंट राइट अप टू नॉट ओनली पंजाब हरियाणा यूपी मध्य प्रदेश एंड महाराष्ट्र क्रॉस करके इवन नॉर्दर्न कर्नाटका तक पहुंच गए so we had to act very fast and everything was pumped in and uh, that's where uh, our youngsters and the drone companies working with state government central government played a big role covid ke samay bahut chhidkav aur surveillance and announcements mein bahut iska use hua aur teesra jo pradhan mantri sahab ki ek badi ambitious ek yojana jo duniya mein kabhi aisa nahi kiya gaya ki there are some 6.64 lakh villages in india 6.5 lakh 6.6 lakh gaon hai hamare india mein har gaon ki har property ko map kiya ja raha hai drones ke madhyam se and then uh, after that uh, picture is taken by a drone it's a very high high resolution picture and then the four or five corners of the house uh, are actually geo tagged to some eight place uh, of decimal after decimal and then uh, a digital property card uh, of the verification is given to the uh, the property owner in the village and the beauty of this property card is it's all digital so you can just take that sheet of paper and just tear it off or or, or burn it it doesn't really matter because just like your aadhar card or your passport details everything is in the government records the land records are perpetual now you can buy sell distribute amongst your children put it on a loan or uh, if there's a highway or an expressway being built you can get good compensation because now you have a digital property record so i can go on and on in agriculture mein i i just saw uh, uh, my very uh, respected colleague uh, ms shomita biswas uh, uh, shomita ji has also just joined us and she's done pioneering work so i don't want to speak much about uh, agriculture because uh, she's done pioneering work like a proverbial jhansi ki rani she has fought i mean so many battles to get these approvals and now she's come up with a very very liberal uh, financing scheme so ek to hamari pli scheme hai manufacturing ke the other scheme is on the usage side so uh, as uh, my previous speakers also mentioned and I, as i said i don't want to get into too much on the agri part the precision agri and there is distribution spraying a uh, 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 urea consumption cuts down by 30% water consumption by uh, almost 90% there's an even spray very fast spray you just take about 5 to 8 minutes to uh, uh, do an acre otherwise by hand, manual spray it, it i mean it's a, it's a very 18th century method of i mean or maybe a, a 10th century method of spraying uh, uh, fertilizer those granules may or may not uh, dissolve or or may just stay there 
but with a spray when you do a cloud uh, atomize that that spray it is very even spray it is uh, uh, almost 80 90% uh, uh, used up by the plant and uh, as i said urea consumption comes from about 30% and water consumption by 90% and thanks to shomita ma'am uh, uh, a lot of money we going to the uh, the, uh, the the pharma producers organizations and uh, the with the custom hiring centers we know that our, our pharma brothers and sisters cannot afford some of these costly drones so uh, uh, they uh, there is a financing scheme wherein uh, they can come they can they can lease it or they can take it on a rent because i mean uh, most of our farm uh, uh, holdings not like us but here uh, because of the fragmentation over several generations it comes around to just one or two acres or maybe even a sub acre so i mean it's just 8 minutes so frankly you don't even need to own a drone you just a uh, given entire villages contract and uh, the agency would come many of the fertilizer companies are now tying up with drone companies and they'll just come and spray it and you pay them the money and they'll move on so lots of things happening here and uh, uh, now I'll stop here because I, I think I've already exceeded my my uh, share of the limelight so I would now give it back to Sharad ji and if there's some question I'll be happy to answer thank you so much and thank thank you thank you uh, amber ji uh, for a very uh, informed uh, speech um, Uh, there is one announcement for the members who are listening. तो ऐसा है कि हमारे ऊर्जावान मंत्री जी कैलाश चौधरी जी किसी कारणवश नहीं ज्वाइन कर पा रहे हैं उनके पी ने अभी जस्ट पिंक किया है अजय जी ने तो बट देन वी आर प्रिवलेज टू हैव शोमिता बिस्वास जी शी इज एन सीनियर आई एस ऑफिसर ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी एग्रीकल्चर सो मैं उनसे निवेदन करूंगा कि uh, अगर वो त, कुछ देर अगर बोल ले आ, हमारे लिए तो वी ऑल विल बी सो बेनिफिटेड और उसके पहले आ, अंबर दुबे जी इट वाज सच अ नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन प्लीज आप लोग जो डिजिटल लैंड लैंड रिकॉर्ड की बात कर रहे हैं सच अ ग्रेट आइडिया आई थिंक कि बैंगलोर जैसे सिटी जो कि सिलिकॉन वैली ऑफ इंडिया है वहां पर शायद आपकी हेल्प अभी ज्यादा जरूरत पड़ेगी बिकॉज देर आर सम जेन्यून प्रॉब्लम विद दी यू नो Uh, that particular city. A lot of people have commented कि आप मत ऑफिशियल्स को साहब को बोलिए कि बैंगलोर में बी डी ए बी बी एम पी एंड देर लॉर्ड ऑफ लाइक लैंड रिकॉर्ड कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन इफ दिस टाइप ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी कैन हेल्प सो इट्स रियली ग्रेट स्कीम पी एल आई इज समथिंग जिन्होंने भी किया है इट्स सच इट्स ग्रेट ग्रेट आइडिया जिन्होंने भी किया है अगर ऑफिशियल ने हमारे किया है तो सच अ ग्रेट आइडिया सो वी रियली अप्रिशिएट दैट with that i i humbly request uh, somita biswas ji to uh, to please uh, speak few things for uh, for us somita ji uh, Pr- uh, prakash ji please uh, have her uh, connect this is already connected i think it's muted somita ma'am if you can unmute your yeah so actually i was muted by the host therefore i could not you know okay. uh, speak uh, uh, thank you uh, uh, dr sharad uh, thank you dr pandey for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, i'm the last minute entrant in this uh, particular uh, conclave but uh, i thank you uh, all uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity I'm, and uh, Mr. Dube has already uh, spoke uh, more or less everything uh, about the policy interventions that government of India has uh, taken with regard to drone technology, in, uh, right from uh, liberalisation of uh, drone policy and the sectors that are already there, different sectors uh, which are started, uh, uh, you know, taking this. Uh, particular technology in their field and uh, making the uh, you know uh, the lives easier for the people whether it is health department or uh, land resource department or uh, agriculture department so i will talk i will just speak for uh, you know couple of minutes uh, because uh, amber has already uh, you know talked about what all are happening and uh, just i would uh, i would take you through how uh, actually we started our journey uh, uh, drones in a journey of uh, drones in agriculture uh, that is uh, it, it it actually started from 2019 when uh, there was one expert committee constituted where all scientific fraternity uh, was there uh, including uh, professor indramani dr alagu sundaram 
and that committee uh, gave a detailed uh, report on use of pesticides through uh, drones it was a detailed guideline given by the committee and it was uh, the committee gave its report uh, in 2020 and that report came to me and then uh, uh, so i was uh, i was uh, very new to this particular uh, subject at that time and uh, i was giving uh, getting all kinds of feedbacks when i was uh, asking people uh, so like for example there are people they said no no it's this technology can be used but but it is a very high risk technology agar ye gir jaye to kafi nuksan ho jayega aur um, uh, so we need to be very careful and uh, while promoting this technology so i was completely i was not very clear whether whether to take it forward or uh, to you know go slowly but uh, all said and done i was i was Uh, in the, in fact the very first day i when i got this subject there was a uh, uh, there was a actually some uh, webinar organized and uh, and it was on drone technology so my learning started from there and then uh, somewhere uh, it it clicked me that yes uh, i think we should take it forward so uh, the first letter from uh, our ministry to the civil aviation ministry went saying that we should uh, you know, so there were certain uh, requirements we had to you know if agriculture drones can be given some uh, different kind of uin or uh, some so some some things we wanted for agriculture drone and uh, to my surprise the response came uh, quite fast which was very un- unexpected and uh, later on i realized that uh, uh, this particular subject is dealt by amber dubey and uh, and he is a person who has you know who has been instrumental in you know all this it it started from the liberalization of drone policy uh, through this drone rules august 20 2021 20, and then uh, so 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 simultaneously we were also working but at a slow pace pace but then when uh, we realized this policy has come and uh, my uh, the earlier secretary he was also very extremely dynamic and he said okay uh, so they have liberalized the policy let us we also should you know do something about it then we said okay fine what is to be done then they, this i had a, a stakeholders meeting and uh, stakeholders means the scientific fraternity the pesticide manufacturers the drone manufacturers and uh, they said we need uh, some kind of you know uh, the standard operating protocols whereby uh, we because the the guidelines for pesticides were are quite in detail so if it is you know converted in uh, standard operating protocols so for it would be very easier for all the stakeholders down the line to use that that protocol so we again uh, constituted two sub committees uh, technical sub committees and we thought uh, if we are going to have sop why not uh, also for nutrient application because uh, nutrient application is equally important when we want to use uh, crop inputs efficiently pesticide was there of course we so we added one more committee so that uh, our work at the same time we do you know uh, both the uh, things together so these committees worked had further consultations with all the experts and then fertilizer manufacturers also were uh, consulted along with that and these two committees came up with their you know uh, operating uh, standard operating protocols and uh, then there were Uh, there were many hurdles uh, as uh, correctly was uh, told by amber that uh, particularly with regard to pesticide application because uh, the the body which is basically re- regularizing the pesticide uh, uh, approvals uh, that body is also quite that way you know they they have their own uh, you know regulatory regime uh so after lot of discussions lot of meetings slowly slowly you know uh, things uh, you know uh, fell in place and uh, we have that sops released last year 
and those sops are available on our website also and this is the second thing that happened third thing uh, happened that sops were now in place but now we wanted how to sort of uh, you know uh, make this technology available uh, the to the farmers or to the growers so we already uh had a scheme called submission of mechanic uh, submission on agriculture mechanization which i was i am dealing with so uh, we thought the easier way would be to add one more machinery that is drone uh, into this list of machinery so uh, so it was a, so we added drone and again it is because of our uh, honorable minister he was also quite i mean uh, he supported us throughout along with our secretary and uh, drones were included in the submission of agriculture mechanization now drones in this particular uh, uh, scheme uh, will be you know in on two there are two basic provisions in that uh, scheme because as you would agree that uh, this technology until unless it is demonstrated among the stake stakeholders the technology cannot be propagated so uh, so so we have added this demonstration as you all may be aware that we have uh, you know different uh, organizations working uh, at the grassroots level uh, we have 700 plus uh, kvk krishi vigyan kendras then uh, we also have uh, farm, farm machinery training and testing institutes then uh, we also have state agriculture university so we have allowed all these institutes to mean uh, to to take to purchase drone and the grants would be given from the scheme for the demonstration purposes so next year up to march 23 the most demonstrations would be carried out that is one second as ambar said that we also have the concept of custom hiring centers custom hiring centers and high tech hubs because uh, all farmers cannot purchase drones and it's a technology and uh, it would take some time for individual farmers to understand this technology so it was uh, thought that uh, it is a, it was a good idea to have it through a uh, custom hiring center uh, system where custom hiring centers uh, have machine already have uh, some machinery which are high cost machinery and uh, they provide this uh, machinery services to the farmers at the village level at an uh, affordable price so we added so this is the second scheme the uh, second provision we have made in this particular scheme so uh, drones now uh, drone services can be provided through the custom hiring centers or high tech hubs this is the second thing and third is uh, our minister was very keen that uh, why not to give this rural youth an opportunity to have some kind of employment through this particular uh, initiative so he said gaon mein bacche hote hain unhi ko wahi log drone chalaye ya wahi log csc establish kare so we added that component also that preference would be given to um, rural youth who have uh, this bsc agriculture degree they can you know establish this custom hiring centers of course though uh, operators as it is already available uh, in the dgca platform uh, that online training program once uh, the operators uh, the trained operators are there csc can hire those operators cs and these entrepreneurs who are rural youth can establish otherwise there are uh, village based uh, other uh, organizations community based organizations also like pacs like farmers societies then farmers producer organizations these uh, organizations have also been uh, can also establish uh, custom hiring center where drone services can be provided uh, so this is how uh, we have gone ahead uh, uh, with the drone technology in agriculture fa- farming sector now now the challenge that we have before us is the skilling so skilling one yes uh, it is it is available online it is a seven days thing and it is uh, quite uh, you know i would say uh, online training uh, is one of the very great initiatives that dgca or civil aviation ministry has come up with 
but uh, at the same time when we talk about uh, pesticide spray through drones uh, it requires little extra uh, uh, i think knowledge and capacity building with regard to uh, the kind of pesticide and the how and how much uh, they should be spraying and uh, though, so uh, national institute of health management has also come up with the uh, training module of 7 days for that uh, so after uh, getting trained uh, in drone op uh, drone operations they can also undergo that training and uh, can start spraying uh, pesticide and those kinds of things uh, however we need uh, to reach at the grassroots level so we are also you know in constantly in touch with the dgcas ministry of civil aviation and then uh, department of agriculture Res uh, uh, research and education there and uh, so that uh, this kvks icr institutes uh, state agriculture universities uh, should come forward and uh, get their instructors or get their uh, officials trained as trainers because we have a huge huge requirement of uh, skilled manpower so we are working on that Uh, so uh, now we are uh, like scientific it's a, it's a, a good thing that the scientific uh, fraternity um, has come forward to have these kinds of uh, discussions and uh, because now what we are doing is a very uh, simple way of spraying it's not it is precision agriculture but it is not still not sensor enabled which we are sort of uh, looking at at the moment but uh, we also want that scientific fraternity should come forward and um, their uh, knowledge their expertise in precision agriculture through drones uh, should be uh, you know adopted by the farmers they should help farmers how they can uh, use this precision agri agriculture technology through drones Uh, and reduce the use of uh, pes pesticide inputs nutrient inputs seeds inputs there are so many other kinds of uh, inputs and uh, can uh, reduce the cost of uh, crop cultivation so uh, so i would call upon scientific fraternity how they can help the indian farmers and farming community uh, in this particular area and uh, also improve the soil health as well as crop health because there are other areas also you i don't know because i joined late there are other areas also uh, where drone technology can be used in farming crop health soil health damage uh, crop yield and so on and so forth so i'm not going into that uh, so eventually we need to work towards that also so i thank you again uh, the global indian scientist uh, association for having uh, invited me uh, thank you thank you thank you so much uh, shumita biswas ji um, so we are uh, as we are wrapping this session 1 um, is dr chandrekar biradar online dr chandrekar biradar okay uh, unfortunately he is not okay that's fine so uh, i will request uh, mr arun pandey ji to give a vote of thanks and then i will uh, and then people who have a busy schedule they can uh, definitely drop but i would request please do stay for at least uh, 15 20 more minutes for session 2 is going to be a very very good session we have very very reputed people from uh, the bharat kisan sangh uh, also participating as a panelist so you can hear the questions and so i would request everybody to if possible please wait uh, with that thank you so much for joining uh, arun ji please give vote of thanks and then dr prakash ji you take over from here thank you thanks a lot uh, first of all gopal ji who has uh, given the very india very good perspective from indian and us both uh, about the in the technologies in agriculture thereafter we are very much thankful to ambar dubey ji he is ours he has rolled out rather drone revolution or i can we can say drone revolution india he has been instrumental and he will be remembered in the history of drone so uh, we have been interacting 
because since he is here uh, and he has played the pivotal role, and fortunately he had been there and he uh, enlightened us with all the government initiatives, uh, drone policies, perspective. We are very much thankful to uh, uh, Ambar Dubeji. And uh, we had bonus, Somita ji had been bonus. We requested and she came. It was the desire of Ambar Dubeji also that she is there and she can speak. So it was good, uh, very good. And she has given such a nice and lucid uh, details about, uh, about all this, uh, 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 details about this agricultural drones and uh, all the other aspects of farm mechanization in India. So uh, we, we are very much thankful to Somita Vishwasti and we can go ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, Prakash ji, all yours. Dr. Prakash. Yes. Great. Well, what an enlightening uh, policy perspective on drone. Uh, now we will have a session two with a lot of uh, experts in the drone area where they're working in uh, drone application, drone research. So we will have a panel discussion on drone applications on the session two. So um, as we all know that uh, IT, information and communication technologies uh, are playing increasing role, uh, especially in addressing problems faced by agriculture. So the challenges faced by agriculture from uh, let's say climate change alone are enormous. And uh, it is need for the farming community to adapt and become resilient uh, is a key to you know, feeding the world's growing population. So that's how the technology, and today drone is a one technology popularly known as unmanned aerial vehicle. So UAVs, also known as drone. So we are talking today on the drone applications in agriculture. It has great potential to support and address some of the most pressing problems faced by agriculture in terms of uh, access to actionable real-time data, you can say. Um, recently, I uh, go through went through a report that is a Goldman Sachs report, which says agriculture sector will be the second largest user of drone in the world in the next five years. And these are increasingly being used in the agriculture sector to meet the challenges of agriculture practices, mostly in a meaningful way. And uh, the actionable information which we are getting from the big data generated by the drone and UAV system, we will use and we are using for the betterment of agriculture. So today we have lined speakers, expert speakers. I'll request host to add everyone in the spotlight. Uh, Dinesh Kulkarniji is our speaker who is from Bharati Kisan Sangh. So he will talk more on scaling perspective. Professor Indramani Mishra from uh, IARI Indian Agriculture Research Institute, head of Department of Agriculture Engineering. He is very instrumental in that. And we have Dr. Sunil uh, Gwantikar. Uh, uh, I will request host to add everyone in the spotlight. And we have Dr. Gurjinder Bath from Texas A&M University. He's a student professor and he, he works on the drone as well. We have uh, CEOs of drone technology, Pradeep and uh, Devesh. Devesh is a CEO of uh, Devesh Technology. Uh, I will request Sumit to add everyone in the spotlight. And then we will start pan our panel discussion. So the format of panel discussion will be, uh, we will have a round discussion for each topic. And then we will have three minute discussion on each topic for each speakers. So we, since we have six speakers, we'll start three minutes for each speaker. Uh, I think I will start from Dinesh Ji. Dinesh Pulkarni Ji is an uh, organizing secretary of mm -hmm. Bharatiya Kisan Sangh. Um, he has more perspective on scaling drone technology at mass level because he has a lot of connection of farmers, farmer associations. And then we will come to the scientific community and the startup community as well. So Dinesh Ji, over to you. Thank you very much, Prakash Ji. Today, this is a big प्रासंगिक इस प्रकार का विषय है इस विषय पर आपने इस चर्चा को जिसके माध्यम से किया है तो बहुत सारे पहलू इसके सामने आ रहे हैं और भी आएंगे मगर मैं तो इस विषय में केवल मेरी जानकारी बढ़ाने के दृष्टि से ही आया हूं क्योंकि ये सब टेक्नोलॉजी ड्रोन की जो है ये भारत में भी नहीं है अभी तक इस मामले में भारत में कोई 
यत्र तत्र थोड़े बहुत प्रयोग हो रहे हैं और उसके भी अभी पूरे तरह से परिणाम कोई सामने आए ऐसा नहीं दिखाई देता है कि वो क्या पॉजिटिवली जाएंगे निगेटिवली जाएंगे एडवांटेज होगा डिसएडवांटेज होगा अभी इसके बारे में कुछ भी बात करना थोड़ी सी जल्दबाजी होगी ऐसा लगता है किंतु निश्चित रूप से ही कोई नई टेक्नोलॉजी आती है तो स्वाभाविक रूप से उसका हमको सभी प्रकार से देखकर विचार करना चाहिए मैं जैसे अभी विश्वास मैडम का सुन रहा था पहला तो जब अंबर दुबे जी का हुआ तो उस समय मैं जुड़ नहीं पाया था मगर विश्वास मैडम को जब सुन रहा था तो मेरे मन में कुछ स्वाभाविक रूप से प्रश्न भी खड़े हो गए क्योंकि 2019 के बाद में 2021 तक जिस गति से ये ड्रोन की टेक्नोलॉजी बढ़ी है तो उस संदर्भ में ये तो हमको पॉलिसी मेकर्स के साथ में कुछ बात भी करनी पड़ेगी ऐसा लगता है क्योंकि उनका जो फोकस रहा अंबर दुबे जी का जो अंतिम में पढ़ा मैं सुना थोड़ा सा तो उसमें मैपिंग है सर्वे है इस प्रकार के कुछ विषय उसमें आए थे जो कि एक ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी का एडवांटेज करके बात आई थी मगर जब विश्वास मैडम को मैं सुन रहा था तो उनके इसमें केवल स्प्रेइंग पेस्टिसाइड और फर्टिलाइजर इसकी ही बात उसमें ज्यादातर आई और उसके लिए फिर नीचे तक की चैन खड़ी खड़ी की जा सकती है इसके बारे में आई तो ये एक क्या हम जो ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी को लेकर जा रहे हैं तो वो क्या केवल एग्रोकेमिकल्स के लिए ही है क्या इसको एक सोचना पड़ेगा ऐसा लगता है अगर ऐसी बात होने वाली होगी तो जो आज माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी से लेकर सब लोग जो प्राकृतिक खेती जैविक खेती की बात कर रहे हैं उसका क्या होगा इसको भी हमको सोचने की बात रहेगी तो इस संदर्भ में कुछ प्रश्न हमारे मन में खड़े हो जाते हैं दूसरा मुख्य सवाल ये आता है मेरे मन में कि ये जो टेक्नोलॉजी लेकर आ रहे हैं तो ये टेक्नोलॉजी किसके लिए ला रहे हैं हो रहा है एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर के लिए करके बात आ रही है मगर एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में जैसे कि उस समय भी बात आई उनके कहने में कि ऑल स्टेक होल्डर के साथ में हमने बात की तो अभी तक तो किसान संघ के साथ में अधिकृत रूप से सरकार का कोई भी कम्युनिकेशन इसमें हुआ नहीं हुआ है कम्युनिकेशन वो भी बताया उन्होंने कि पेस्टिसाइड मैन्युफैक्चर फर्टिलाइजर मैन्युफैक्चर इनके साथ में उन्होंने बात की है जो सही में स्टेक होल्डर है जो स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर है हमारे देश का क्या उसके साथ में सरकार के स्तर पर कोई पॉलिसी की चर्चा हुई है क्या और सही में इस टेक्नोलॉजी की उसको आवश्यकता है क्या बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि टेक्नोलॉजी आती है और वो किसान के गले में बांधी जाती है मैं बांधी जाती है शब्द प्रयोग कर रहा हूं हाँ इसके बारे में हमको सब तरह से ठीक तरह से विचार करके लेकर आना चाहिए इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं है मैं जीएम टेक्नोलॉजी की बात करूंगा कि बीटी टेक्नोलॉजी दैट वॉज नॉट नेसेसरी एट ऑल इन आवर कंट्री फिर भी वो किसानों के ऊपर थोपी गई है तो ऐसी बातें जब आती है तो कोई भी टेक्नोलॉजी जब आती है तो मेरे मैं उसके बारे में ये सोचता हूं कि इसका जब तक सोशो इकोनॉमिक इम्पैक्ट का हम स्टडी नहीं करेंगे तब तक इसको आकर लेकर जाना है क्या कौन से क्षेत्र में लेकर जाना है इसको सोचना चाहिए जहां तक कि ड्रोन के अन्य उपयोग हैं निश्चित रूप से वो उपयोगी है जैसे कि सॉइल सर्वे है क्रॉप का मैपिंग करने की बात है मगर ये इंडिविजुअल फार्मर के लेवल की बात नहीं ऐसा मुझे लगता है इंडिविजुअल फार्मर लेवल तो स्प्रेइंग का ही विषय ज्यादा आएगा और वो कस्टमर हायर सेंटर होगा या और भी बाकी बातें होगी तो ये भी विचार करते हुए सोचने वाली बात रहेगी मेरे मन में और एक प्रश्न इसमें से खड़ा रहता है कि जैविक खेती की जो बात पूरे इसमें चल रही है तो इस प्रकार की अगर एग्रोकेमिकल की स्प्रेइंग उसके माध्यम से होगी तो इसका क्या होगा दूसरा प्रश्न यह आता है कि विषय यह आया कि इससे लागत कम होगी सही में लागत कम होगी क्या बढ़ेगी इसको भी देखना पड़ेगा तो ऐसे कुछ बिंदु आते हैं हो सकेगा कि इसमें से कुछ अच्छे प्रकार के और डिस्कशन होते हुए कुछ बिंदु हमारे सामने आ जाएंगे तो इस पर मुझे लगता है कि हम इस पर आगे और भी चर्चा जो एक्सपर्ट बैठे उनके माध्यम से इसको बढ़ाएंगे We will discuss those in second round. हमारे मन में निश्चित रूप से एक्सलेंट पॉइंट एक्सलेंट पॉइंट वी विल डिस्कस दो इन सेकेंड राउंड सो द फर्स्ट राउंड इज बेसिकली ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन एंड द बैकग्राउंड वट यू आर डूइंग एंड वट इज 
your role in the drone application in agriculture. So I will go to the Professor Indramani Mishra ji. He is head of Department of Agriculture Engineering from Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. And he was very instrumental in uh, implementing or formatting, forming, formulating the drone policy in India. So Professor Indramani ji, over to you. Thank you, Prakash. Uh, thank you, uh, Kulkarni ji. And uh, I'll, uh, you know, uh, co-panelist. Uh, really, it's a very important topic and Pandeji uh, came one month back and uh, we discussed that we should organize under the just uh, platform. And uh, today uh, it is being organized and uh, initial, uh, you know, the first session was really excellent. Uh, so uh, Gopalji gave, uh, you know, all different uh, applications of drone and uh, then Ambarji, uh, presented how fast uh, we went, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, just facilitating the things. And uh, then Somita ji uh, was really very instrumental and uh, and all things, all these things have come now. I, uh, as you told that time at IERI, and uh, let me tell you that in 2019, when uh, this, uh, you know, there was an interface uh, rather uh, before that between ICR and ministry, and it was decided that, uh, ICR should uh, you know, develop uh, guidelines and uh, then uh, then Joint Secretary uh, Suniji was another name who was very, very, uh, you know, great contribution from his side. He initiated and uh, then uh, in this uh, SMM program and other mechanization related program, I was close to him, then he said, we have to do it. And then uh, we started working and ICR took the responsibility and uh, Professor Lagu Sundaram was uh, Deputy Director General Engineering, he was the uh, chairman and I was convener and uh, scientists from uh, pathology, entomology, agronomy, soil science, all, all were included. And the uh, beautiful thing was that uh, we at the time decided that we will take all different stakeholders, uh, you know, we, we co-opted the industry, drone industry, pesticide industry, fertilizer industry, and uh, we arranged uh, some field experiment uh, in Haryana and uh, in uh, IRI farms. And, uh, you know, first hand, uh, you know, data we collected that how it is going to be reducing the drift, going more penetration, then more effectiveness, more uniformity. All those parameters were uh, discussed and, uh, you know, and in detail be worked out and very fast because we took all these, you know, our policy was that uh, those all the stakeholders are in place. We were making, you know, this for uh, farmers. Kulkandiji said that uh, farmers uh, were not in, uh, in all these, one, uh, you know, activities, not the farmers, uh, you know, uh, national level representative, but we worked with farmers, on farmers field, for farmers, we did uh, this and they were, they were very happy. And both Aram Sanu ne kaha ki wo jahaj wala, hala ki humne ne kaha ki ye jahaj wala nahi hai, jab humne idhar Haryana mein kiya tha. So, iske baad the policy aayi aur Somita ji aur DGCA ko main appreciate karunga ki bahut jaldi unhone hamare jo recommendation thi pehle ki bhi jo drone application ke culture mein kaise chuke farmer level pe use hona hoga to bahut dher saare you know permission aur ye inko jo hai thoda kam kiya jaye aur ye bhi diya ki bhi jo agri agri drone ke liye unhone kaha ek color diya jaye alag se inka numbering wagera di jaye wo saari baatein aur dher saari baaton ko unhone swikar kiya to ye karke jab pehli committee bani aur jaisa ki Somita ji ne kaha ki फिर दो कमेटी और एक मेरे साथ थे और उसमें गोरंटी वारी जी थे हमारे और फ्रेंड्स थे हमने एक जो न्यूट्रिएंट एप्लीकेशन पर और दूसरा जो है अपने पेस्टिसाइड एप्लीकेशन के बाद पर दूसरी कमेटी एसओपी धर की उसमें हमने सीआईबीआरसी को साथ में रखा और ड्रोन इंडस्ट्री को साथ में रखा पर्चाइज इंडस्ट्री को साथ में रखा और ये चीजें सामने आई हैं अभी फर्स्ट राउंड में मैं इतना कहना चाहूंगा कि जो कुलकर्णी साहब ने जो बात उठाई एक्चुअली इसको ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी को एक तो ये नहीं समझना है मैं कई लोगों को समझाने को किया कि हवाई जहाज नहीं है ये अनमैंड एरियल व्हीकल है एक से तीन मीटर ऊपर क्राफ्ट के जस्ट ऑपरेट करता है सिंपल एप्लीकेशन है जैसे हम जब पेस्टिसाइड अप्लाई करते हैं नॉर्मली तो हॉरिजेंटली पाइप से अप्लाई करते हैं ये वर्टिकली करता है तो कॉम्बिंग ऑपरेशन के थ्रू 
नीचे तक पूरा जहां पर अगर अगर मान लीजिए पेस्टिसाइड कोई नीचे है तो वहां तक जाएगा 25 परसेंट बात सही है कि पेस्टिसाइड की सेविंग होती है 30 परसेंट नाइट्रोजन की सेविंग होती है जो बातें कही टेक्नोलॉजी को मैं इसलिए कहूंगा कि जो ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग की जो हम बात कर रहे हैं तो इसमें हमने गाइडलाइंस में ये दिया है कि कोई भी इवन बायोपेस्टिसाइड है आ, या आप जो जीवामृत और इस की बात करते हैं इन सब को जो हम ऑर्गेनिक खेती में यूज करते हैं उनको भी आइडिया है कि ये मशीन है इससे टाइमलीनेस इंश्योर किया जाता है कम समय कम इनपुट में हम इसको अपने काम को अंजाम दे सकते हैं तो इसलिए डर नहीं है इससे अगर आप जैसे इंजेक्शन है तो आप अगर उसे अमृत दोगे इंजेक्शन से तो अमृत जाएगा आप जहर दोगे तो जहर जाएगा तो इंजेक्शन का दोष नहीं है दोष क्या रखते हैं तो ये क्या कहते हैं काफी वाइड है और उसको हर एक जो भी चीज हम अप्लाई करना चाहेंगे उसको हम यूज में ला सकते हैं Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Mani. So, in the in the next round, in the consecutive round, we will discuss more on field protocols and other applications. Uh, I am getting over one round for introduction and in the background. What you guys are doing? So, I will go to Dr. Sunil Gorantiwar, and he is leading all efforts of uh, drone in, uh, especially in research and agriculture universities. So, Dr. Gorantiwar, over to you. uh yes uh, good evening and good morning to all and thank you very much uh, uh dr prakash sir uh, i will also introduce myself i am sunil gorantiwar uh, and uh, i am head department of uh, agricultural engineering at mahatma phule agricultural university rawadi uh, i was a member of the committee uh, that drafted uh, the standard operating uh, procedure for use of drone applications for spraying of pesticides and crop nutrients and uh, dr indramani as he told uh, he was chairman of the committee uh, in fact uh, i would like to uh, explain uh, uh, the different uh, drone uh, related activities that uh, we are currently performing uh, as has been envisaged in our introductory round uh, first of all let me tell you that uh, uh, we are all, we are also implementing uh, one uh, national agricultural higher education project uh, on climate smart agriculture and water management since uh, 2018 uh, at uh, mahatma phule agricultural university and uh, we had proposed uh, one of the thematic areas uh, of uh, uh, this research project uh, as application of drones in agriculture Uh, then uh, we started uh, thinking on what kind of the drones uh, we should procure and uh, what kind of the uh, research based studies are required and what are the needs uh, and requirements of the farmers but then when we went through uh, uh, the drone policy that was existing those days and it was really very difficult and uh, we were a bit annoyed that whether we should really be uh, carrying uh, the drone based research uh, uh, with that hard framework but then uh, after covid started uh, then uh, we also uh, started organizing uh, online uh, training programs on different thematic areas and then in the beginning of uh, 2021 we organized one uh, three weeks online certificate course on uh, uh, fundamentals of uav and uh, we are fortunate to have uh, dr ambar dubey ji as our chief guest uh, during uh, valedictory function of this uh, uh, three weeks uh, online uh, training course though he had agreed initially just for 10 minutes uh, but then he was with us almost for more than 60 minutes actually uh, participants were very much delighted but uh, besides that whatever he told whatever he encouraged uh, during his valedictory address uh, uh, that drone policies were re revisiting and it is going to be relaxed and uh, i think it is uh, uh, right time that uh, you start uh, doing uh, different kinds of the research studies on drone and from that point onward uh, then we thought that uh, we, uh, we shouldn't forget uh, drone but we should go ahead with uh, uh, drone based research Uh, then at our center we established uh, the laboratories a laboratory for uh, drone research now our laboratory consists of uh, one hyperspectral imaging drone one fixed wing drone one mapping drone with thermal and 3d lidar camera two mapping drones with rgb three spraying drones uh, three spraying and spreading drones two training grade drones and 24 practical assembly drones 
the uh, basic idea behind setting up this lab is uh, to promote uh, uh, our masters and doctoral students to undertake the research studies on drone uh, then second is uh, to train our bachelors and masters students and also farmers uh, on uh, assembling dismantling of the drones and if there are any fear factor amongst those to remove that because we have 24 this uh, training uh, grade drones uh, which uh, we uh, almost uh, provide to the students uh, for training purpose so that uh, thing we did and then we also applied for rpto remote pilot training organization our application is in process because uh, uh, we need also to produce the train or license uh, uh, drone pilots and we our university has already five drone pilots amongst us uh, then third thing what we did is uh, we have started series of the research studies uh, based on the standard operating procedure that we developed for uh, crop nutrients and uh, 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 spraying and also pesticides uh, spraying we have started uh, 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 developing the separate protocols for soybean and sugarcane, and then we'll be extending this study for uh, further crops. And finally, uh, we are organizing the series of demonstrations for the farmers in the region because you know the uh, farmers in Western uh, Maharashtra, they are very curious, studious, and they always prone to adopt the advanced technology. They are they search for the advanced technologies and they keep on mm -hmm. uh, approaching us. And we almost uh, organize uh, one demonstration for the farmers uh, every week. Uh, I think uh, this is thank what you. we are doing mm -hmm. and uh, the background in short. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Grantiva, for such a insightful highlight what you guys are doing. Uh, technology always has scope of improvement. Uh, I will introduce uh, Dr. Grujinder Bath. He's a student professor of um, crop science and so crop and soil science at Texas A&M University, and he has a lot of projects on drone technology. But there is a scale change from US to India, so he will highlight more on that what he is doing in the Texas A&M. So over to you, Dr. Bath. Hi everyone, this is Gurjinder Bhatt. I'm assistant professor in digital agriculture at Texas A&M here in US. I'm also president of uh, Association of Agriculture Scientists of Indian Origin. So in terms of research, my program focuses on data-driven agriculture approaches, uh, research approaches to uh, develop precision ag techniques. So we use drones a lot. Also, we work on developing decision support tools, uh, targeting different cropping systems in Texas. So, yeah, that's that's in terms of my uh, what I what role I play in terms of my background. I am originally from uh, Punjab. I was born and brought up on a farm, small farm in Punjab, and uh, I did my undergrad in uh, agriculture from Punjab Agriculture University (PAU), and then I came to US in 2014, and I did uh, uh, my training. Uh, on masters and PhD related to agriculture here in the US. And then uh, as a postdoc, I worked with Dr. Gopal Kakani. So I think in our last session, he covered most of the stuff that we've been doing. So we've been working on drones in terms of research, and there are many, many different ways where we can improve our research productivity, efficiency. And I would like to actually today focus more on the farmer side, how we are using it from farmer perspective and how it's possible uh, for uh, uh, Indian agriculture. So yeah, that's the land. There are wonderful talks today. I listened to some talks, wonderful a discussion by some of our experts, agriculture experts, policy makers, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to more discussion. Thank you. Uh, excellent. Excellent, Dr. Bath, for such a crisp and nice introduction and background. I will over to now our young brigade, uh, Pradeep. Pradeep is a CEO of Thanos. Thanos is a startup in agriculture spray, especially, and mostly he's working in Southern India. So Thanos, uh, could you please highlight your work and your background in a few minutes? Sure, Prakash. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, can you confirm if my voice is coming through properly? Yes. Sure, great, thank you. So thank you for that introduction, Prakash. So just to give a brief of uh, myself. So I'm Pradeep, I represent Thanos Technologies. We are a Hyderabad, Telangana based uh, drone manufacturing company established in 2016. And our major focus area is agricultural spraying bone specifically. So as quite a few panelists uh, before have been highlighting, there's a broad range of applications when it comes to agri. Uh, we believe that almost any application when it comes to drones in agriculture comes under the 
two umbrellas of uh, agri automation or agri intelligence as simply as that any application that you take and we are focusing on agri automation so the drones that we build can be used either for liquid spraying with minor uh, modifications they can be used for granular spraying so with this kind of technology we've been working with some of the world's largest agrochemical companies over the last uh, four to five years buyers syngenta and quite a few uh, renowned companies agri service companies and agrochemical companies we have uh, done a lot of field research based on which we have improved the products and a lot of on field service also we have done based on which we have taken the knowledge about the technology availability to farmers in multiple states uh, happy to uh, stress on more specific aspects that other panelists also stress upon in the next rounds of discussion thank you thank you thanks a lot of uh, now we have a youngest panelist uh, devesh devesh is a ceo of debest technology uh debest technology is popularly known in india for vaccine transportation through drone and he is now doing a lot of efforts in agriculture as well so devesh over to you please introduce yourself and your background work namaste everyone uh, first of all thank you very much uh, for inviting me in this such a elite uh, webinar uh, so we are making kishan station kishan here stand for knowledge intelligence system and agro application network like we all know that uh, drone is a very expensive technology so it's not going to be affordable for everyone but uh, for keeping that things in mind we are making a station but since 2017 only i started to these stations in bihar where uh, we are putting drones and drone ek fayde nahi means now you can see your farm in a bihar from us that was the concept idea and from that act uh, activity we have a app from that app you can do crop uh, we are doing crop monitoring crop advisory people in patna is able to buy the crop uh, from a remote state uh, remote district of bihar just by sitting by seeing there the actual farm so crop monitoring uh, and crop marketing equipment rental in bihar we are working with jivika jivika is the one of the huge uh, project by government of bihar where uh, uh, women uh, are uh, uh, making a self help group and uh, we are working with uh, government of chatisgarh also now with the, our technology with our intervention because it's not just about uh, drone uh, flying over the farm actually the data interpretation so the is uh, either it's a uh, anatomy of the plant or something about the disease or just a simple application government wants to know how much crop loss has been in the farm so they are able to give the compensation in the real time so overall 360 degree solutions we are providing till now we have uh, uh, in in while we are doing the experiment with the bihar agriculture university and borlog institute of south asia we has spread more than 10000 acres uh, in multiple crops nowadays we are able to identify 30 type of types of uh, um, Uh, crop sig uh, signature dg signature of biotic stress in paddy and more uh, things are coming with the bihar agriculture university thank you very much thank you thank you devis uh, now we will start second round of panel discussion which is more which will be more focused on the drone applications different dimensions of drone application in agriculture so i will start with uh, uh, dinesh ji dinesh ji if you have some point then we will move to same cycle with dr indramani dr gurantwar so dinesh ji if you have any point on what are the different uh, applications in agriculture if you are thinking in uh, farmers perspective uh agar kisanon ke drishti se vichar karna hai to mujhe abhi koi uski zyada ये स्प्रेइंग का विषय ही ज्यादा आ रहा है वो okay. अमृत करेगा क्या जहर करेगा यही बात है मगर बाकी तो कोई एप्लीकेशन में जिस प्रकार से कहा है वो बात है मगर मेरा इंद्रमणि जी से ये प्रश्न रहेगा कि क्या इन्होंने इसका अमृत का उपयोग करके देखा है कभी अभी जितने भी जगह पर जिस प्रकार के प्रयोग हुए है उसमें कहीं गोमूत्र के आधार पर बने हुए फॉर्मुलेशन का कहीं प्रयोग करके देखा है ये एक मेरे मन में विषय आया था बाकी मुझे ऐसा लगता है इसमें कि टेक्नोलॉजी तो सहायता करती है निश्चित रूप से मगर टेक्नोलॉजी का कहा और किस प्रकार का उपयोग करना ये बिल्कुल हमको तय करना पड़ेगा एक बात आई थी कि इसके लिए गाइडलाइंस तय की जा रही है कि गाइडलाइंस के आधार पर क्या क्या करेंगे कैसा करेंगे मुझे जहां तक याद है कि हमारे यहाँ जब बीटी टेक्नोलॉजी आई थी तो बीटी टेक्नोलॉजी कपास के बारे में आते समय रिफ्यूज का भी एक गाइडलाइंस उसमें दिया गया था मगर रिफ्यूज का गाइडलाइंस पूरे देश भर में एक भी किसान वो उसको अनुपालन नहीं कर सका क्योंकि उसके पास में दो एकड़ से कम जमीन है अगर रिफ्यूज का एरिया लगाना है तो उसमें उसको लगभग 25 परसेंट एरिया उसमें 
देना पड़ता है और फिर उसकी कपास लगानी पड़ती है कल हमने इस प्रकार के कुछ भी गाइडलाइन किए तो क्या इसका प्रैक्टिकेबली भी कुछ व्यवहारिकता के आधार पर इसमें से कुछ रास्ता निकलेगा या कुछ और बातें होगी ये प्रश्न हमारे मन में आता है तो इस दृष्टि से एक बात को देखना चाहिए दूसरा एक विषय मैंने पढ़ा था मुझे अभी पक्का जानकारी भी नहीं है उसकी मैंने केवल एक दो आर्टिकल उसके बारे में पढ़े थे कि यूरोपियन कंट्रीज में फॉर द यूज ऑफ ड्रोन का जो यूज है वो पॉलिनेशन के लिए करने की भी बात आ रही है ये अगर यहाँ बैठे हुए विशेषज्ञ है वो उसमें अगर जो भी बात होगी वो बताएंगे मगर मैंने दो आर्टिकल इसके बारे में पढ़े थे कि ड्रोन के माध्यम से पॉलिनेशन करने की है तो मैंने उसका विषय ये आया था कि पॉलिनेशन ड्रोन के माध्यम से करने की क्यों आवश्यकता पड़ रही है तो हनी बीज का पॉपुलेशन कम हो रहा है और हनी बीज का पॉपुलेशन कम होने का कारण क्या है तो नेचुरली हम जो पेस्टिसाइड इंसेक्टिसाइड का यूज कर रहे हैं वीडीसाइड का उपयोग कर रहे हैं तो उसके कारण ये पॉपुलेशन पर असर पड़ रहा है अब हमको वो पॉपुलेशन बढ़ाने के लिए नेचुरल सोर्स का उपयोग करना चाहिए या ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी लेकर आना चाहिए और ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी के जब लेकर आएंगे इतने हजारों संख्या में आएंगे तो उसका डिस्पोज करने का भी एक विषय हमारे सामने आ सकता है ऐसी भी चर्चा उस पेपर में की हुई थी तो अगर इस प्रकार के कुछ ड्रोन के उपयोग होने वाले होंगे तो मुझे लगता है कि हमको इसका विचार करने की आवश्यकता रहेगी धन्यवाद धन्यवाद दिनेश जी दीज आर एक्सलेंट पॉइंट दीज एक्सलेंट पॉइंट आई विल ओवर टू यू प्रोफेसर इंद्र मनी जी बिफोर यू आंसर हिस्स क्वेश्चन डेफिनेटली ड्रोन पॉलिनेटर इज ए बिग कंसर्न फॉर प्लास्टिक वेस्ट इन एग्रीकल्चर सो विल डिस्कस मोर ऑन दैट एज वेल सो ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर इंद्र मनी धन्यवाद प्रकाश जी धन्यवाद दिनेश जी आपका कहना बिल्कुल ठीक है कि हमने जो बताया वो ये कहा कि जो बायोलॉजिकल टेक्नोलॉजी है और जो इंजीनियरिंग टेक्नोलॉजी है उसमें मैंने डिफरेंस करने की बात की कि इंजीनियरिंग टेक्नोलॉजी से जो भी चीज आप अप्लाई करने की कोशिश कोशिश करेंगे वो अप्लाई कर सकते हैं अभी जो आई ने बहुत एक इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रोजेक्ट शुरू किया है प्रिसीजन एग्रीकल्चर पर और उसमें हमने क्राप हॉर्टिकल्चर एनिमल फिशरीज सारे इंस्टीट्यूट को लिया है तो एक होल गैमट आप जो प्रिसीजन एग्रीकल्चर लेकिन ड्रोन भी उसमें एक टेक्नोलॉजी है हमारे यहाँ डॉक्टर रवि साहू उस पूरे प्रोग्राम को नेशनल लेवल पर लीड कर रहे हैं उसमें ड्रोन के जितनी एप्लीकेशन शुरू में हमारे फ्रेंड ने बताई थी जो अमेरिकन फ्रेंड थे कि भाई हम इन इन एरियाज में तो मैपिंग के लिए क्राफ हेल्थ समझने के लिए न्यूट्रिएंट की कब जरूरत है ये समझने के लिए इन सब चीजों पर एक बृहत रिसर्च हो रही है और उसमें हर एक तरह से देखा जाएगा कि जो ड्रोन से कौन सी चीजें हम अप्लाई करें जिससे हम फायदा ले सकते हैं अब कोई चीज अमेरिका में की जा रही है उससे हमें हमारा अपना अप्रोच डिफरेंट हुआ आवश्यकता आविष्कार की जननी होती है और आवश्यकता के हिसाब से ही टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग करना चाहिए तो हम लोग अभी जो सोच रहे हैं जो अपने पेस्टिसाइड और उसकी बात आई चूंकि पेस्टिसाइड ट्रैक्टर के के ट्रैक्टर के साथ जो बूम स्प्रेयर है उनसे यूज हो रहा है डायरेक्ट भी नैपसैक स्प्रेयर से भी यूज हो रहा है और ड्रोन से हो रहा है तो ये एक्सपेरिमेंट तो हमारे जो गोरंटीवार जी हैं उनके यहाँ भी हम लोगों ने जब एक्सपेरिमेंट किए वहाँ भी आंध्र प्रदेश में तेलंगाना में जो यूनिवर्सिटीज हैं उन सब पे चल रहा है एक चीज तो बहुत स्पष्ट हो के आई है कि पेस्टिसाइड एप्लीकेशन को 25 परसेंट तक आप कम कर सकते हैं तो कम से कम सीधे सीधे है कि अभी जो 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 अभी हालात है पेस्टिसाइड एप्लीकेशन से उनमें हम 25 परसेंट की घटोतरी कर सकते हैं एक ये है जहां तक क्या कहते हैं दूसरे ऑर्गेनिक रिसोर्स है जो उनको अप्लाई करने की प्लीज एक्सपेरिमेंट्स उनके चल रहे हैं हमारे जो दूसरे कमेटी मेंबर नहीं ज्वाइन किए जो हमारे साथ थे तो आंध्र प्रदेश में जो है वो उन्होंने कुछ एक्सपेरिमेंट किए हैं डिटेल रिजल्ट आपके सामने आएंगे अभी ये सिर्फ कैपेबिलिटी है टेक्नोलॉजी की ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी से जो भी आप अगर कोई लिक्विड फार्मुलेशन है या इवन सॉलिड फार्मुलेशन को भी अप्लाई करने की मेथड है 
जो अभी हमने इसमें फर्टिलाइजर एप्लीकेशन न्यूट्रिएंट एप्लीकेशन और पेस्टिसाइड एप्लीकेशन की जो बात कर रहे हैं या हम उसे प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन कह लें कि चाहे वो ऑर्गेनिक हो चाहे इनऑर्गेनिक किस तरह से उसमें हमारा जो है जो मेजर उपयोगिता है वो टाइमलीनेस की है जैसे जिस काम को हम पूरे दिन भर करते थे उसको हम दिन भर लग जाता था काम जैसे सात आठ मिनट में उठा का आदमी कर सकता है एक तो कभी कभी होता क्या है कि जो इंसेक्ट पेस्ट का जो अटैक होता है जैसे आप तो शुरुआत में हमने इसकी बात की थी कि लोकस्ट की बात की थी उतने फास्ट होता है उसके लिए फास्ट मेथड चाहिए उसे कंट्रोल करने का ताकि नुकसान को बचाया जा सके ये विषय है रिसर्च का वो चल रहा है बिना सारा स्टैंडाइज किए आगे नहीं बढ़ा जाएगा और आप जैसे विद्वानों से जो किसान विद्वान हैं उनसे आइडिया लेकर के ही इस इस विषय में चलेंगे गाइडलाइंस अभी आई है इसे पिछले दोनों विषयों पर आई न्यूट्रिएंट एप्लीकेशन और इन पर क्योंकि इसके लिए टेक्नोलॉजी तैयार थी और जो नीड भी कई किसान नाप दीजिए या ना दीजिए किसान अपने आप शुरू कर दिए हैं तो इससे अच्छा है कि गाइडलाइन जरूर ला लीजिए और उसमें इसी बात के लिए कहा गया कि कब करोगे कितना टेम्परेचर हो कितना विंड स्पीड हो दिन का कौन समय हो और ये कितनी हाइट पे करो एक से तीन मीटर के आसपास में पॉन्ड नहीं होने चाहिए आसपास में घर के आसपास कितना दूर रखोगे तो वो वो चीजें देख करके उसका डिटेल की अप्लीकेशन के पहले अप्लीकेशन के बाद और चूंकि इसमें हम केमिकल फर्टिलाइजर दोनों रूप में यूज करने जा रहे हैं तो उनकी पूरी डिटेल गाइडलाइन दी गई है और आपको ये ये कहते हुए मुझे मतलब हेजिटेशन नहीं है कि आप ये इतना ज्यादा डिमांड लोग कर रहे थे कि भाई आप गाइडलाइन दो या ना दो हमें तो यूज करना है तो लेकिन हमने सीआईडी और इन सबको इंक्लूड करके ही कहा है कि जब तक ड्रोन कंपैटिबल जो फॉर्मुलेशन हैं वो चाहिए वो पूरा टेस्ट इवेल्युएट होना चाहिए उनका कितना रेजिडुअल इफेक्ट रहेगा किस तरीके से होगा ऑल ऑल सारा डाटा कलेक्ट करके ही आगे बढ़ा जाएगा कॉसन के साथ गाइडलाइन जैसे सोमिता जी ने कहा कई राउंड मीटिंग हुई और मैं भी उसमें था तो सारी चीजें ये रखी गई कि कौशन के थ्रू ही क्योंकि ये नीचे देखिए जो अभी जो मिनिस्ट्री ने जो निकाला है उसमें आप क्लियर कट लिखा हुआ है जो इन्होंने आ, क्या कहते हैं इवन एस एम एम स्कीम में डालने के लिए कहा है तो नीचे बिल्कुल क्लियर की सी आई बी की गाइडलाइन डीजीसीए की गाइडलाइन ये सारी को अच्छा सा आपको फॉलो करना है और तभी ये स्कीम के फायदे दिए जाएंगे तो मैं समझता हूँ कि कासन के साथ जैसा कुलकर्णी जी ने कहा कि कासन के साथ चलना है सावधानी के साथ और एक एक जगह अपने को स्टैंडराइज करके उसके फायदे नुकसान देख करके तभी आगे बढ़ना है टेक्नोलॉजी अपने आप में ठीक है एप्लीकेशन हमें बिल्कुल जो है ना सुधार के और टेस्ट करके और उनके लिए गाइडलाइंस स्टैंडर्ड तैयार करके आगे बढ़ेगा और यही सरकार की भी यही मंशा है थैंक यू डॉक्टर मिश्रा फॉर हाईलाइटिंग दो will be very precise on this round drone applications in agriculture and the security challenges will be in the another round so i will go to dr gorantiwar very precisely if you highlight what are the applications or the field in the drone applications mm -hmm. uh okay thank you very much uh, in fact uh, there are several applications of drones in agriculture and uh, we talked uh, many of those but we focused our uh, discussion mainly on the spraying uh besides uh, spraying on uh, spraying of pesticides and nutrients uh, a few of the applications were already told uh, in in agriculture uh this is one uh, is mapping mapping actually uh, this is uh, uh, one of the applications and we, we have been using that now uh second uh, application of uh, drone is uh, Uh, a bit, I will say, the forecasting or forewarning actually. Uh, 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 but this this needs certain uh, certain research studies, uh, and we have started one of the research studies, and we also are looking for the knowledge partner for this. Uh, that is when, uh, and for this purpose, we also have uh, the uh, uh, hyperspectral cameras mounted on drones, uh, wherein uh, we are going to uh, see that whether we can. Uh, Uh, forecast uh, uh, the incidence attack uh, some few days uh, before uh, its occurrence and based on this whether we can decide our uh, 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 our pesticide spraying so this is one and uh, the second uh, area of uh, the drone application is also in irrigation water management uh, 
because uh, drone is the formidable tool uh, through which uh, we can uh, assess uh, the uh, not only biotic stress but also biotic stress uh, uh, whether uh, the plant vegetation is subjected to uh, stress or not uh, and whether there are wet areas or drier areas and if we are able to uh, identify those areas of course satellite image can also do but then there is always lag time uh, in satellite uh, image analysis and drone based image uh, analysis and based on that uh, whether if we decide that this portion of the command area or irrigated area needs irrigation and whether we can trigger the irrigation system accordingly. And let me tell you that for this purpose, uh, we have formed one consortium led by Water Source Group 2030 of uh, 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 World Bank uh, and also Water Source Department of uh, the Maharashtra government and another some 15 partners are there. And we are going to uh, demonstrate uh, this uh, uh, technology uh, in Nashik district of uh, Maharashtra. So this is regarding uh, irrigation uh, application as well. And another is uh, in fact seeding actually, uh, because one of our esteemed speakers already told that uh, when we use uh, the big machineries, then we tend to compact the soil and we know when we compact the soil, uh, what are its disadvantage and whether we can uh, use uh, uh, drone uh, for seeding purposes. I, I think besides uh, spraying and uh, uh, the, uh, all those things, uh, drones have uh, several other application. Uh, but then I want to extend just uh, what Dr. Indramani told, uh, 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 just to uh, 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 what we uh, say that uh, answer uh, the queries of uh, Dinesh Kulkarniji. Uh, in fact, uh, when uh, because we know that when we say that the drone application in agriculture, uh, the spraying of pesticides and no spraying of nutrients come in mind. Uh, but then we need to think in two ways, actually. First thing is that anyway, we are using the chemicals by uh, our traditional means. And if we use the, the drones, then preliminary observations at Mahatma Phule Krishi Vidya Pitch showed that we can reduce the chemicals by 30 to 40%. And of course, uh, we, we are going to uh, uh, come out with the, the proper recommendation for this purpose because drone is uh, the drone technology is in very much in infant stage and we have just started its research. Uh, and the second point uh, 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 Dinesh Kulkarniji raised is regarding uh, the uh, organic formulations. Uh, because the same kind of the question was asked by one of the farmers some three months ago when we organized one workshop just to identify the farmer needs for drone-based research. Uh, then uh, there was first question on whether we can use the organic formulations for this purpose. Fortunately, our university has one research center on uh, organic farming as well. Then uh, we have uh, uh, in fact planned the research studies for using uh, liquid biopesticides and liquid uh, biofertilizers. And there are such kind of the nine liquid biopesticides and uh, uh, fertilizer formulations that we can use through drones. And uh, maybe we will be starting uh, uh, the research studies on this because whenever uh, any research organizations like uh, IRI or universities, when we uh, provide a certain uh, package of practice, then it has to go through our research mechanism. But Kulkarni Sahib, we are going to start research studies initiate uh, as far as biopesticides are concerned. We'll try to cover uh, majority of the formulations. And as far as biofertilizers are concerned, we'll try to cover the formulations for uh, sugar cane, sugar beets, uh, 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 that's all. But then maybe we would like to also uh, discuss in detail uh, with you our uh, group of farmers who deal with this mm -hmm. so that uh, before farming uh, our research experiments on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gurantiwar, for such a uh, uh, detailed explanation on the application of drone in agriculture. Uh, Dr. Bad, how do you see uh, scale change of different application in US and if we want to use in India, how do you see the different application in the US in you know, sure. drones? Now, Prakash, if we talk about U.S., so here the farm size, they're pretty big. So 100 or 1,000 acres are pretty common on the farmers here. So, and we have a lot of labor problems. So farmers, they cannot visit each field. So that's where drones are big, uh, playing an important role for crop scouting. So the drones can help in 
uh, inspecting the crop in terms of any problems related to water stress or uh, weed problem, disease problem. So all those things farmers can do here with the drones. So it also leads to site specific management. So basically they don't have to uh, manage their entire field in the same manner. They can site spot fertilizer management or pesticide applications. So that leads to more money, more saving for farmers and also it, it conserve environment. So it's a win-win situation. And also these days, it's, it's not only inspection only, there is also a lot of, uh, like we are talking about the sprayer. So this is also becoming common here in US. So drones are not only used for spotting, for finding the locations in the field where the weeds are more, but also applying herbicides. So those kind of research activities, activities or applications have been going on. Now from the India point of view, uh, our small farmers, and as I mentioned, I am also was born and brought up on a small farm. Our farmers, they have, I believe, uh, average size would be maybe some farmers have three to four acres. And uh, even though we have labor problem, but it's not that bad. So for detection purposes, if there is a weed problem or a, a disease problem, farmer can himself go and visit those fields and identify. However, there are some problems which cannot be detected by just visible inspection and which needs some analysis on the back end, some image analytics, like uh, uh, if we're going to do the irrigation management, so what, up to what extent a farmer can delay, and then uh, some si uh, specific nutrient management. So all those uh, are the application where some sort of analysis is needed and farmer cannot detect with their just naked eye. So that's where I see a lot of potential and other management like the pesticide, because if there is some potential, because those chemicals, those can be hazardous for the health. And uh, same way, the seeding, if there can be some seeding with the drone, those are all the possible application that I see for the farmers in India. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Bhatt. Uh, what do you, Pradeep? Pradeep, how do you see uh, if you interact with farmers, um, they will ask you different kind of uh, applications of drone, not only in spraying, otherwise uh, how they can use for monitoring and disease um, surveillance. So uh, can you highlight what Thanos did in the last couple of years? You are muted. Yeah, uh, sure, Prakash. So I will uh, probably speak mostly about the experience we have and a couple of applications that are possible that we are also involved in direct or indirectly. So like I said, initially, agri automation is what we are mainly focused in and specifically with regards to spraying. So most of the work we've done with the agrochemical companies or with universities or farmers, the thousands of acres of few demonstrations we've done taking the technology, uh, it's mostly to do with uh, pesticide spraying and uh, micronutrient spraying. This is where most of the focus has been. And what I can honestly say from an industry perspective, is in terms of knowledge or awareness, it is no longer in the very early or nascent stages, but there is some kind of awareness out there thanks to newspapers, media, YouTube, and whatnot. There's a at least high level awareness that uh, these aerial vehicles are now in India for these kind of uh, spraying activities. And the key benefits or the reasons that farmers want to use this. So naturally, any new technology is not immediately adopted unless there are first uh, uh, adopters, the early guys, the progressive farmers who use it. And that's how it has been for us. Any village we go to, uh, usually in a B2B model through agrochemical companies or directly as well, it's the people who want to adopt the technology first, they do a demonstration. Uh, for every farmer, there are about 100 farmers outside who are a bit skeptical of uh, how the technology might work. But the moment the demonstration is done, everyone uh, come jumping at it saying, this is something we need. And the reason for that is one, like uh, Professor Indramani also mentioned initially, is the time it takes to address the issue. The moment you have a pest attack, the moment you identify that there is a shortage, you have to address it in the shortest time possible. Otherwise, the spread is uh, pretty fast. So that is something where we've done several pilots where in a day, what a team of two laborers may be able to do four to five acres using a Taiwan sprayer, we are able to conveniently do 25 to 30 acres on a, any given day. That's a huge 6x to 8x uh, increase in productivity. And in addition to this, these are the intangible benefits which you may not always be able to quantify. That is the extremely efficient manner of spraying, which 
increases the yield, reduces the input, and finally affecting the farmer positively on the financial side. And the health hazards about which not many speak about, those are more or less completely eliminated because at the time of spraying, there is no human present inside the field at all. So you could more or less say that is completely eliminated if you're following the standard operating procedure. And on the environmental angle, of course, there is the 90 to 95% uh, reduction in uh, water usage as well. So uh, other than this, in addition to spraying, what we and a few others in the private and government sector are also trying is pollination. What Mr. Uh, Dinesh also mentioned initially. So pollination, when I say it's not uh, with regards to fruits or flowers or uh, horticulture, but mainly with respect to the crops like paddy or uh, uh, maize. So when we talk about seed production, the seed production is where this is currently being tried. A few companies and the universities are trying. So we can certainly see that in the coming couple of years, this will get commercialized. And the reason for this to come up is the aspect of uh, the fact that seed production, the pollination time is a very brief window during a season, not as uh, widely spread as spraying. It's a very brief window. And during that brief window, you have to employ 100 or 150 laborers for a huge seed production area, which doesn't always uh, become possible. So from that, need to reduce the labor uh, usage over there and the ability to increase possibly the seed production output also, the requirement has come. And this is one additional application you might start seeing for, uh, commercially in the coming years as well. Yeah, thank you, Pradeep, for highlighting that. For hybrid seed production, we need controlled pollination. And for controlled Got pollination, it. we need drone, uh, you can say drone pollinator. So that's Got that's it. perfect point. And that's how uh, drone pollinator is not coming for general crops. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Uh, Devesh, uh, I know your company is doing a lot of efforts in uh, medical field and other field. Could you please highlight what are the applications you are you guys are doing for agriculture, like um, uh, spraying or uh, monitoring? So could you please highlight that? Yeah, uh, we started this company with the vision of for agriculture only because uh, we faced in agriculture the huge amount of data collection. So that's why we built uh, drones which could fly in the hilly areas also. Later on that we used in medical. So our gene is agriculture only. Uh, in agriculture, when I talk about, uh, like I, uh, one of our uh, elite uh, panelists asked about the spraying of uh, the liquid like organic liquid and all we did in uh, 2019 only in uh, uh, Lucky Sarai district of Bihar we sprayed uh, uh, Gomutra and all so uh, the, we were knowing that this is going to solve the mechanical problem but the huge problem was from the perspective of the government like uh, government need to know that if there is a crop loss due to flood and all and we, uh, the uh, in, in drone also, there are multiple drones. One drone can cover, uh, do the mapping of 400, 200 acres. But there are some drones like we are building. These can do uh, 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 acres in a day. So first thing was the data collection tool. And after that, when we are collecting the data, the application over it, like uh, we were uh, collecting sensor uh, data, then the uh, spectral data, and then the image zone. So, but the drone image was just not enough. We were overlapping over the satellite image and the ground truth thing. So, we have been aware of our people were deployed because the threshold were not there. And then we deployed in some KVKs, uh, some of the sensor, like labellian sensors. So, we could... Uh, come on a threshold that if, if the reading is, uh, is is going in correct or not. And after when while we were doing these things, we got some of the output out of the box. Like uh, we saw that uh, the moment we are collecting the data, automatically crop marketing is happening. It was the byproduct, not we were intent. Means when we are collecting, uh, we are flying over the farm, we know that where is the bindi, where is the paddy, where is the, uh, where is the uh, maka and all. So uh, in Bihar, uh, uh, that time uh, cooperative department was uh, starting some the some of the survey for the which um, uh, they, they started a kind of tarkari kind of movement. So we started to give data to them and it was very, uh, very fruitful for them. Then cooperative department was uh, suddenly asked that, can you uh, give me the data for the 40 villages where we want to assess uh, the, the crop loss was made by hailstorm or not. So slowly, slowly we got to know that hey, this drone is not uh, just a flying activity or just an a, a just a techno, just a uh, plant health basis only. This has, this, this has a huge applications right from the crop monitoring to crop advisory 
to uh, crop marketing even the equipment rental nowadays in my farmers are able to sell their crops even before the harvesting because we know that we have we, we start to intimate uh, uh, to the buyers even before they have been um, harvested so automatically these plan came then uh, in 2020 only uh, some of the officials from the irrigation department uh, haryana irrigation department they asked uh, devesh can you identify uh, i have uh, given the money for the drip irrigation uh, i want to know that uh, the drip irrigation has been the, the has been deployed or not in the farm so these were the outputs then we got then we made a consolidated port, uh, uh, portal for the for the perspective of the uh, department and the perspective for the institution and then the perspective for the corporate like agri input and output companies and the last the fa- the farmers then uh, and because uh, the drones uh, policies were forming we were uh, spraying just with the universities and all we were knowing this is the uh, this technology this tools uh, is going to be the future and this is going to definitely help for the <coughs> small and marginal farmer also mm-hmm. when i'm talking about a small and marginal farmer like in uh, i i you will be surprised to know uh, prakash ji uh, i we i belong from madhubani district very uh, very orthodox if there the where the fragmented land are very rare even in these areas people started to take on the rent like 50 rupees ikatha like like uh, uh, spraying on the orchid because there is a huge gap of for the labor supply also because we are telling that uh, the states like bihar and jharkhand and and odisha and all labors are going from in another state here the labor labor scarcity is are there then we got to know that uh, a lot of people residing in the in the gurgaon and, and in the bangalore they have a very keen interest to to know to see their farm not physically but in the virtually so while in this covid 19 duration we developed this app and it gave a a, a huge interpretation to the youth like suppose we are flying a drones and we are giving an app uh, a, a farmer that farmer is not that much interested but uh, someone who uh, the, the youth uh, because in every uh, family there is a youth now he knows about the youtube now he knows about the facebook he was very keen interested and he uh, started to influence the decision of the buying of uh, of seeds and all because in uh, we were knowing that a lot of people were taking farmer uh, farming activity as orthodox nobody not even a not, not a single farmer wants their son uh, to be a farmer and another side uh, we started to notice that a lot of people are talking about organic farming it has become a new uh, fascinating thing so we made this application based on this uh, this uh, drone uh, Uh, drone thing, but drone is just a data collection tool. So a lot of thing is happening in the backend. Like when we collect the data, we do analysis, we do comparison, prediction, alert, and symptom and solution. Like 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 in Amazon, you are just clicking and you are buying things, and it's mm-hmm. come to your house. Or from the customer perspective, it's a very simple thing. But from the backend, it's a huge thing. And then then the last challenge what we faced. I won't take too much time. Mm-hmm. like uh, imagine uh, uh, a lot of uh, our engineers were not understanding the name of disease or they were not familiar with the when when we have a people of remote sensing like a lot of expert told you that uh, they are using hyperspectral camera and all even we are using base fix and all but we lo- we are facing a lot of expertise problem uh, suppose my remote sensing guys is able to tell the patches or the crop stress but they don't know the package of practice of uh, or name of the disease the local name of disease or, or when we were talking to the agri experts uh, they were not knowing about to, how the drones are flying and what kind of data you are giving it it was like uh, educating a doctor about uh, the x ray even the x ray was invented so we are uh, facing a knowledge gap to understand the remoting sense the remote sensing data that's why mm-hmm. we were talking we were in university they oh, were and we were educating about them about the drone So yeah. for that, for that, thank you, Devesh. For thank that, you. we have final round of data security and challenge. So this is the final round for our panel yeah. discussion. I'll go to Professor Indravani Mishra. He will talk more about the data security because the breaching data of neighboring farmer when you fly drone is, will be a big issue in next couple of years. So over to uh, Professor Indravani Mishra. He can highlight about data security and challenges for drone. You are muted. You are muted. Mm-hmm. i wanted to actually highlight uh, two, two things one uh, you know uh, the issue of uh, which uh, somita ji mentioned uh, under sai ambika uh, uh, arun ji uh, you know uh, initially highlighted what is there so next to uh, what uh, you know after uh, uh, you know uh, declaring these guidelines and uh, you know that uh, don't can be used in agriculture the one very important step which has been taken by a uh, ministry is uh, you know 
uh, and f that fear is always there. No, so new technology is there. So how to uh, how to popularize it? So big program on demonstration of uh, uh, drone technology. And uh, initially, you will be you know uh, very happy to know that uh, ICR, FMTTI, and SAU they have been asked to, you know to submit proposal. And this will be you know uh, the, this will good for all the who are attending and they can spread to others we need a good proposal from uh, these uh, institutions uh, and a, 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 a sum of rupees 10 lakh will be given for uh, you know purchasing drones so this is one step and then uh, your POs, you know the, all the uh, PO can apply they can apply through state government and 75 uh, percent of the drone cost will be uh, you know uh, uh, given to assistant, grant in aid assistant will be given to them, and then uh, another myth, another scheme is given that is somebody uh, you know is not purchasing drone but they want to work with the drone manufacturers. Then uh, six thousand per hectare rupees, you know, uh, six thousand per hectare that grant will be given to them. And if you are having drone, uh, you have taken through a scheme, then then three thousand per hectare rupees will be given to you. And he, he also mentioned that if you are an agriculture graduate, then, uh, you know, 50%. So uh, that uh, that you will, you will be given 5 lakh rupees. And to centers like RLG, which custom hiring centers, same scheme which will be applied for 40% uh, uh, aid. Uh, so that is uh, uh, being given to all, uh, you know, Custom hiring. So, Pandeji, your point was very important that what all is being given in SMAM, a submission on agricultural mechanization. And this is very good step. That was the one very important recommendation of uh, Lagu Sundaram committee, which I was converted that uh, uh, this the whole, this is, uh, you know, the drone should be included in SMAM. And when the castle is always there, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, CIBRC guidelines and uh, uh, this DGCA guidelines are to be, you know, uh, followed. Another important point, which uh, was mentioned by uh, you know my friends, that uh, please remember, and uh, this was by the way, that uh, uh, it is true that uh, you know drone-like technology are going to take agriculture to new step, and that way they will attract number of use towards agriculture, bring the smartness to agriculture. So that is very important point. You know, we have to uh, we have to understand. Similarly, it happened with tractor also. If you ask a, a, a you know a, a farmer's son and daughter that to go and uh, plow the land using uh, uh, they see plow and uh, you know, so sometimes it becomes uh, not you know difficult a little arduous also. So tractor came, and uh, uh, cow and others they will be more used for milk animals uh, for milk and uh, you know milk and others. So uh, I wanted to highlight uh, what is given in SMAM and uh, definitely uh, the, the, uh, the precautions etc which has been given in guidelines those are very very important and uh, 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 the DGCA the guidelines have been already been given and uh, we have to we have to follow them so uh, from <clears throat> the ministry side lot of effort is being done and uh, uh, my my request is that uh, uh, universities institutions and individuals mm -hmm. They should take advantage of these, uh, you know, uh, provisions and uh, make best use of uh, this new technology for best possible purpose. Thank you, thank you, Prasad Mani Mishra. Uh, Dr. Guranti, could you please highlight precisely on the data security and the challenges in drone application? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but before that, uh, just uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell one application. Uh, besides uh, several primary applications, uh, there are secondary applications of the drone as well. Uh, we, we are implementing again one consortium research project on carbon financing in the Nandurbar district of Maharashtra, over 70,000 acres of the land. And uh, for uh, providing the inputs to the carbon financing model, we are using drone just to find out what is the land use pattern, land cover, inundation area, forest and unforest area. So, so drone, drone has certain secondary application as well. So this is just an example. And as far as uh, the security uh, issues are concerned, I think uh, that to, to my opinion, uh, that will be a very uh, big challenge in uh, 
coming years. Uh, uh, in the beginning, I don't think uh, there will be uh, uh, much noise in that because the drone will be considered as a, a fancy atom like we used to consider uh, these analysis and replication uh, in the beginning. Uh, but uh, in case of the drones, uh, they are mounted with the cameras uh, as well, or they could be uh, mounted with cameras for mapping and uh, monitoring. And it is quite possible that uh, these cameras will also scan the areas that are not uh, intended to be. And hence the extensive use of drones will uh, result in uh, privacy being violated or breached. So that will be one issue. And in coming years, we may have to uh, find uh, the solutions uh, uh, for this. Uh, then uh, another uh, security and other concerns are uh, there, though uh, our standard operating procedures that uh, have been released by the government, uh, uh, this highlights uh, several security issues. Uh, but then say, for example, uh, we say that uh, there should be appropriate buffer zone between the target and non-targeted area or between the farmers who are using drones and who are not using drones, but then it is very difficult to monitor this and this may result in certain damages and conflicts as well. SOP also mentions that drones should be operated 100 meter away from the water bodies or residential areas or certain public utilities, uh, dairies and poultry, but then how to monitor this, uh, uh, then uh, how uh, the, uh, this happens. Uh, these are uh, really certain concerns. And uh, then there is one more concern regarding the data as well, uh, because uh, the drones uh, will generate uh, uh, a lot of data. So those data, of course, will be stored on clouds, then will be analyzed by uh, several algorithms and so on. But uh, then when it comes to the farmer level or even at university level who are not uh, experts in this data analysis and all those things, uh, uh, we may not understand uh, properly where this data is going and all those things. So I think these are uh, the security concerns. And I will tell one example uh, 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 regarding this automatic weather stations, actually, uh, the, the bit similar uh, thing. Uh, these automatic weather stations, uh, earlier we used to apply uh, 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 individually or as standalone piece. But then later on, uh, several multinational companies emerged and uh, they used to install, at, uh, when we purchase automatic weather stations from them, they will install. And then later on, we realized that they are also getting our uh, data. And, and uh, then uh, if we want our data through uh, certain other means, or if we want APIs to ourselves, then they will charge rupees 30,000 to 50,000 rupees per year. Though this automatic weather station is installed on our land, and though we have paid for that. So if such kind of the things happens in case of drone as well, uh, because uh, the, those company will provide drone and maybe if there are certain arrangements on the drones, wherein all mm -hmm. those data will go to their clouds directly, uh, then what about the data security and all those things? These are the issues. And I think uh, we need to have certain kind of the brainstorming and uh, workshops uh, for this purpose to solve these issues uh, with the startups and with the manufacturing association and with the uh, stakeholders. But I think in coming years, mm -hmm. uh, when the use of drone will go on increasing, uh, these uh, security problems, those will also be the challenge. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for highlighting the challenges on data use and data security. Uh, Dr. Bath, how do you think if you fly drone in US with large farm size, um, is there any issue of data breaching or uh, breaching the privacy of neighboring farm? And how do you address those uh, concern in drone applications? Sure, sure, Prakash. So as I mentioned, we have here farmers have bigger size and size. So there are less chances of trespassing, I would say, but it could happen, but we don't see that much problem. But if we say that in India, where the land holding sizes are small, those are the challenges that we should be aware of. Because suppose a farmer is doing or flying a drone for some application and the neighboring farmer might be wondering why this person is doing that. And also, if a person is applying a herbicide such as like 2,4-D, who has uh, drift issues, so because we grow a variety of crops in in India, so the neighboring crop can be damaged. So all those things are actually important to be considered as we, as these drones become more and more common in agriculture. And in terms of data use and security, 
I would say data is is a challenge everywhere, not only in India, even in US as well. Our farmers they are using drones a lot these days, even though it's this take it as a cool tool or taking images. So, but they don't know how to use the data, or and then they are also hesitant to share the data. If I'm a US farmer, I would say, well, I like to have more technical advancement, technical tools, but I don't want to like share my data. So that's that's a, a problem we are facing. If there is a more encouragement for the data sharing, our farmers could share more data. There are a lot of advancement improvements that are possible in the research. And uh, even though we may not be considering the data point of view at this point in Indian, Indian agriculture, but that's something we also should be considering as we move forward, there should be uh, a more of a culture of data sharing, data sharing platforms where uh, farmers can share data and farmers have some clarity how their data will be used and uh, what will be the beneficial out of that. So those all things should be encouraged. And in terms of challenges, as we discussed the challenge of uh, um, trespassing into the neighboring field, those are things we need to be considering. And then uh, I would say knowledge. Knowledge is the main thing which is limited. Even in US, we are working on refining our approaches. Other than pesticide applications, all the other precision egg techniques in terms of nutrient management, weed detections, disease problems, we need to define our techniques. A lot of research is needed. How can we better use that data to identify problems, to identify the uh, spots where the farmer needs to do some management? So all those refinements, research activities need to be done. So there should be more efforts on that. Other than that, as if we see some more future of drones, uh, like farmer using the drones, we need to work on the training as well having building extension programs at different universities where um, more actively precision ag programs can be developed where extension personnel, they, they get trained. And also state officer, like agri agriculture officer, they, they are getting trained on the, on the drone side. So that way we can move ahead and organizing more farmer workshop than showing farmers drone is not something that is just flying, it's collecting data and how that data can be useful. And what are all the guidelines that we should be careful because we also need to be considering security and breach and all. So I think all those things need more clarity as we move forward with that. And uh, yeah, that's my point. And actually, I would like to apologize. I have to leave early, I have a meeting. So mm -hmm. it's been a wonderful session. You guys all are doing great, and I believe you'll be doing, continuing doing that in shaping a good future of drones in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Bharat, for uh, highlighting different evolving potential of data use and data challenges in agriculture. Uh, Pradeep, uh, thank you, Dr. Bharat, you can leave now. Uh, Pradeep, how do you see as industry stakeholders uh, the challenges in data use or data processing and data challenges in drone especially? Right. So uh, one thing is, so we are not too active yet on the data collection or mapping part. That's why I can straight away say that I may not have uh, direct on-field inputs, but what I can tell you, one of the applications that we have attempted in the past and which has huge potential is with regards to agri-insurance and uh, agri-based analytics. And agri-insurance is already something some insurance companies uh, are already working on where they use drone imagery to process uh, crop insurance, pre and post uh, drought or pre and post season, pre and post flood. They take these data scenarios and accordingly process insurance claims with more visual aspects where there is no possibility of someone cheating the system. So that is one, uh, one different application that is there. And naturally the application of actually getting analytics based on the imagery of the field, huge amount of data that can be available, be it for agricultural companies, nutrient companies or anybody, who can design better products to improve the state of the farm. Now, certainly, uh, we, I at least hypothetically, I can't see a major uh, uh, data security issue here because typically in a lot of Indian fields, there are no physical boundaries also from field to field. It's difficult to demarcate which field is whose unless only the owner can uh, point it out. So uh, with a state like that, I would say what uh, Professor also uh, just a few minutes ago said with regards to data sharing, 
that's something that uh, becomes very important where let's say uh, same way villages are being mapped in one of the government schemes if entire agricultural lands are also mapped on a season to season basis large scale products can be created software based analytics based products which can help these farmers in a large way agri insurance can be uh, better managed so a lot of these uh, aspects can be addressed now how and uh, in what way someone might misuse this data i am not sure i can comment on it right now but the proper usage of such data has a lot of benefits uh, for the indian farmer thank you thank you pradeep uh, there is uh, how do you see challenges in terms of data in your uh, ventures in last 3 4 year and especially in agriculture you are muted Yeah, talking about data. There are two types of yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, when I'm talking about data, there are two type of uh, data. One is one is about the ownership, name of farmer, mobile number, etc. So that is the security concern. Definitely, people ask that uh, I should not this data should not sold to the for the commercialization purpose to the uh, seed and agri input companies. And then other thing is like uh, data about the crop when we are taking loan imagery. So we were facing a, uh, still we are facing a lot of challenges like uh, because these data are very huge amount of like uh, uh, putting. it cloud is still a very big challenge so still uh, we have to carry this data to a kisan station center then we are processing it and uploading it so we uh, a lot of uh, things are coming on so on that areas still because this industry is still evolving a lot of uh, concern like like in like a computer like computer evolved then the <laughs> then internet came and then the security camps so yeah definitely it's a, it's a concern but now in nowadays it It will take times so, uh, for people uh, to know more about, and definitely the industry will uh, do the all the necessary uh, steps. The policy makers, the the administrations, they are also enduring that uh, because already um, Ministry of Civil Aviation and DGCA they have some uh, protocol. Although they have uh, the very uh, liberal policies, but they have the certain uh, they have made sure that spraying rules and all which uh, which is being used, uh, they that should the components are uh, are um, mostly indigenous or or it's. It's, it is following the all those protocols of data uh, because we are mostly operating in uh, india right now but in future uh, like, like uh, we uh, we are getting some of the inquiries from the out of the uh, other companies so definitely we will follow all the gdpr norms and uh, it's 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 quite a still in a very early stage so i won't be able to highlight too much about the data security concern over to uh, you with, uh, yeah thank you thank you this with that uh, i will request dinesh ji to conclude this panel discussion uh dinesh ji has concluding remarks on the panel discussion then we will go for vote of thanks by yellow ji uh bahut bahut dhanyawad prakash ji main to pehle gist forum ka dhanyawad dena chahunga ki ki bahut acche prakar se charcha isme hui hai aur is prakar se charcha hone se sab vishay nishchit roop se hi sabhi pehluon par charcha hokar vishay aage badhega uh टेक्नोलॉजी के विरोध में तो भारतीय किसान संघ या मैं स्वयं भी कभी नहीं रहा टेक्नोलॉजी तो चाहिए टेक्नोलॉजी से निश्चित रूप से ही भौतिक सुविधाओं का और बढ़ना आगे हो ही जाता है किंतु कोई भी टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में विचार करते समय अर्थात ये बात रहती है विज्ञान के बारे में हमने बचपन में भी स्कूल में जब पढ़ते थे तो विज्ञान के बारे में आता था क्या ये शाप है क्या वरदान है इस प्रकार की इससे कंपटीशन और ये चलती थी आज भी चलती होगी शायद तो कोई भी टेक्नोलॉजी आते तो उसकी दो साइड तो निश्चित रूप से होते ही है जो भी हो गया किंतु हमको मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि जो भी टेक्नोलॉजी अभी इसमें ड्रोन के बहुत सारे अच्छे उपयोग भी सामने आए हैं दूसरी बातें भी सामने आई हैं तो मगर बेसिकली मुझे ऐसा स्वयं को लगता है कि जो हमारा सोशो इकोनॉमिक ताना बाना है इस दृष्टि से इसको देखकर हमको विचार करने की आवश्यकता है क्योंकि जिस प्रकार की दुनिया आज बनती जा रही है तो इसका कॉन्सेंट्रेशन होते जा रहा है इसका वन पॉइंट सिंगल पॉइंट पर चलती जा रही है तो इसमें से अनेक प्रकार की समस्याएं आगे चलकर खड़ी रह रही है आज भी हमको दिखाई दे रही है 
जब कभी डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन होने की आवश्यकता के स्तर स्तर पर हम कहीं सेंट्रलाइजेशन के ऊपर तो नहीं जा रहे हैं इस बात को देखना पड़ेगा अभी डाटा की बहुत सारी बातें आई है तो निश्चित रूप से डाटा एक बहुत बड़ा टूल है ही मगर इस टूल का उपयोग कौन किस प्रकार से करेगा इसके ऊपर आपका कोई नियंत्रण है क्या नहीं इसको देखना पड़ेगा ऐसा मुझे लगता है और जहाँ लाइवलीहुड की बात आती है तो अभी कुछ दिन पहले मैं एक पेपर पढ़ रहा था तो उस पेपर में उन्होंने इस प्रकार की बातों को हाईलाइट किया कि सॉरी तो उस प्रकार की पेपर में उन्होंने हाईलाइट किया था इसको हमको सबको बेसिक बातों को तरफ ध्यान देने की आवश्यकता है उन्होंने एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में आज जिस प्रकार की रिसर्च की दिशा है उसको देखते हुए उन्होंने ये कहा था कि इस प्रकार की रिसर्च की दिशा रहेगी तो हम दुनिया की भूख कभी भी मिटा नहीं सकते हैं ये बड़ा ही बोल्ड स्टेटमेंट उस आधार पर उन्होंने किया था तो इस बात को हमको समझना होगा और इस बात को बेसिक स्थिन आधार पर ही देखकर चलना पड़ेगा टेक्नोलॉजी आने के कारण सुविधा बढ़ जाती है निश्चित रूप से ही मगर उसका मानवता के आधार पर क्या परिणाम होने वाला है इसको जब तक हम आकलन नहीं करेंगे सृष्टि पर क्या परिणाम होने वाला है तो नहीं तो हम एक समस्या का समाधान करने के लिए जाएंगे और उसमें से और दो समस्याएं खड़ी हो जाएंगी कि जिसका हमको आगे की पीढ़ियों के लिए विचार करते हुए चलना पड़ेगा इतना ही मेरा इसमें रहेगा बाकी चर्चा बहुत अच्छी रही इसमें से कुछ बातें अच्छी तरह से समझ में भी आई है इनको लेकर और भी हमको काम करने की आवश्यकता रही है ऐसा लगता है तो इस बातों को एक अच्छा सब लोगों के दृष्टि से एक अच्छा सेशन रहा तो प्रकाश जी को मैं मेरी ओर से और किसान संघ की ओर से इस कार्यक्रम में सम्मिलित होने के लिए अवसर दिया इसके लिए धन्यवाद देते हुए नमस्कार an international coordinator of uh, global indian scientists and technocrat forum a uh, yellow ji over to you for vote of thanks you are muted what a fantastic set of speakers i was just uh, thinking about it few days ago uh, we have ngo representation we have a uh, 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 business organization we have national research organization as well as uh, academic institutions especially in this drone arena the awareness and then understanding whether i can use it or not i think all these dimensions are going to be extremely useful uh, this is i think from uh, gist a little effort and uh, going down the road we wish that more such events more such speakers will be able to take the messages i heard somebody mentioned 700 plus kvks actually there are 735 kvks and when i had a conversation with professor trilochan nohapatra he identified that is very valuable for us and that is a very kvk which is working in kind of collaborations partnering with one or the other ngo that kvk has become successful it is much better so how can we utilize existing opportunity and take it further i think you all have shown what is doable i think this is a strong message for us as well me as well that how we can identify people like you and make the message reach to the larger amount of audience back in bharat very vast country different agricultural zones different climatic conditions and all those things considering i think there is a potential that needs to be understood to exploit it for good so with those words i sincerely thank uh, every one of you but i would also like to take the names because otherwise it will become incomplete dr sunil ji it was very wonderful to hear from you uh, so is shri pradeep ji and uh, i think we wish you all the best in terms of taking your uh, drones to larger masses uh, dr indramani ji or professor indramani ji you are not a new person every time you come and speak it is so inspiring and so motivating 
and uh, Dr. Gurjit, Gurjinder Bhatji, he had to drop off, but uh, my thanks to him as well, as well as uh, uh, Devesh Ji, Devesh Ji sir. So great, uh, we appreciate your help. Our gratitudes are there. And uh, this program is uh, successful because this was uh, spearheaded by both uh, Sri Sharad Mohanji and uh, Dr. Prakash Jha. And of course, there were plenty of audiences who have taken this message with those good notes, closing thoughts. I will stop my uh, vote of thanks. Namaste.